All right. Hello, folks. Welcome to episode six, uh, where wow. we're working on, yeah, six. Uh, we're working on uh, MicroZ's song themes app. I'm amazed it's episode six already. Yeah. Already got, I don't know, 12, 15 hours of coding. Wow. Cool. And it's, uh, on the one hand, it's, it's like, you know, we're making progress. On the other hand, I always look at how long it actually takes. And yes, we get sidetracked, which is totally fine. We get <clears> sidetracked <throat> by stuff on the stream um, and conversation. And please don't hesitate to, to say hi and ask questions. That's why, you know, we're doing this live and not just pairing off on our own. Um, yeah. But it always strikes me as like just how long stuff takes. Um, <laughs> it, it takes time. Hey, Full Nuffle, welcome. Nice to see you again. It just takes a long time. It just, <laughs> it just, only. I said the nearly. J yes, that's the other <laughs> J word. <laughs> so uh, last time we we pushed to production. We did, uh, and that was that was exciting. Um, not not a whole lot of functionality, but it's all <laughs> test driven. Um, so. With security by obscurity. Yes, yeah, security by obscurity, the best kind. <laughs> uh, so where are we at? Should I put your screen up? Sure. Actually, let's throw up. Should we do? Do you think it's still worth giving the high level? I think if people don't know where we're at, um, they can go watch episode one. Okay. Cool. Uh, we we can we they'll they'll get it from from looking at what we're doing. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, sure, sure. Throw, share my screen. And I'll, All right. I got Jira brought up. Jira, of course. Right. That's the first thing you do in the morning. Hey there, oh, yeah. <laughs> first, first. I think you were beaten by uh, Fulnafo, who's on YouTube. But you're the first Twitch. Ah. You still get a, a badge or a star for that, don't you? <laughs> you get Not from a Twitch you, perspective. You, you get show. You, you show up. You show up on the video. There you go. That's, yeah. That's your. That's your reward. So, um, but yeah, so, we finished two high level, uh, at least two high level stories. Yep. And I think we were, we left off <clears throat> talking right. about um, what to do next. I kind mm -hmm. of, after we stopped streaming, actually this morning, I kind of wrote up, we wrote two. We just wrote, I think, persistence and mm -hmm. add via UI. Right. <clears throat> and I was thinking about it and I was like, well, we could at a repository first where it's not going to a database, mm -hmm. then right. persist to a database. Right. Um, that's sort of the the right hand side of the hexagon. <clears throat> or on the left hand side, we could we originally talked about adding songs via the UI, which could be simple. It could be even simplified to adding a single song. <laughs> right. Um, and then there's also and, the sorry. So I was gonna say like Whereas inside the code, adding one or many, there's not really any difference. Uh, right. From the UI, there could be a substantial difference. Right. Yeah, and that's why. Yeah. It's got the UI. Just want, I just wanted to mention that there, you know, that it is, a, you know, not always necessary to do, you know, zero, one, many. Um, well, at least one and many. Uh, but I think in this case, it'll it'll actually be useful. Um, and then I realize, I mean, I'm not going to want to be typing songs one at a time in <clears throat> and right so i don't know if we want to i mean for me i was thinking we should probably do the the right hand side of the hexagon first and then tackle ui that's kind of what i was thinking but i don't know what what your thoughts were yeah so um so full novel asks about you know have i already explained hexagonal architecture and, and at least on this stream this this series of, of episodes i have not uh, so this might actually be a good time to, to just give a very high level uh, uh, thing because it, it will inform what, what we do next. Uh, so let me go ahead and borrow a screen. Yes, borrow the screen. Uh, see if this works. Um, let me pull this. Pardon me while I move stuff around on screens. 
Okay, so you're over there, and you're over here. And there we go. Okay, so this is my, I don't know, three minute explanation of, of hexagonal architecture. Uh, so we start out with, with the hexagon. Um, and again, and I, I think I explained this on, on my stream yesterday, uh, but Alistair Coburn, who uh, invented hexagonal architecture, or at least wrote about it, uh, was also called ports and adapters. Um, he does not differentiate between application and domain and, and whatever. So he's basically saying that anything inside the hexagon is application and you do whatever you want. Um, the way I apply hexagonal architecture is uh, very much informed by domain-driven design. So there are two internal layers. So the innermost layer, uh, and it's structured this way because this layer has no, uh, no awareness of IO. It has no awareness of the outside world. It's like living in this platonic ideal of just sitting in RAM, executing code, no awareness of where data came from, no awareness of where the objects themselves came from. This is where we implement all of the business rules, processes, validation, constraints, invariants, whatever you want to call them. Uh, that's where this is. And, and everything in here is using the ubiquitous language, um, all the good stuff from domain-driven design. Then we have sort of surrounding it uh, sometimes I feel like it's 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 like coddling it and protecting it from the outside world is the the application layer, sometimes called the use case layer. Um, both are, are great. Uh, and this is the thing that, while it's aware of I.O., has no concrete sort of implementations of I.O. It doesn't have uh, awareness of a specific database. It knows how to talk to some database through an interface. Uh, but it doesn't have anything specific. It can talk to an external service, but doesn't have anything specific. And so it knows how to talk to persistence and send out maybe notifications to the outside world, but has no idea of how that works and is still not touching hardware. So there's still no I.O. And so this is the hexagon. This is the application or use case boundary. And what that means is when we plug in things like the UI, <coughs> um, they basically talk to to talk to the application layer, and if we had other ways of communicating, those would be plugged in as well. Uh, and those are the adapters, and their job is to translate and transform things. From from our perspective and where we're at um, is kind of here. Uh, we've been writing tests um, against multiple layers against the adapter as well, um, but if we want to sort of push forward from here we're going to have to involve the application layer. And so the application layer is, is uh, also sometimes the coordination layer. So it's coordinating, hey, if I want to execute some command on uh, a domain object, like add a user to uh, an event they're attending or add a song to a song database, where, does that, where do those objects come from? Well, they have to come from somewhere and somewhere outside the, the, you know, the, the process run space. Um, it's likely persistence. Um, but generally, we're going to drive that through tests. Uh, and so we're going to drive that through through these, these unit tests. Uh, and it's generally uh, the way I think about, and this is why I like hexagonal over other diagramming forms like clean, is, is there's an asymmetrical left to right direction of how you think about data flow, uh, which also then affects tests. And so we want to write these tests sort of from left to right. Um, and then persistence, uh, we don't need the actual real persistence. We can have uh, an in-memory, like you mentioned, we can have an in-memory fake repository that that um, fills the role of persistence, but where we don't have to worry about having an actual database up front. So, um, and we can implement the real persistence and other stuff we need. Uh, there's some other stuff, but I think that's basically the, the main thing I wanted to, to talk about was just sort of the layers inside the hexagon and, and sort of how that informs our, our tests. Question, Ted. Did you yeah. mention that 
um, the dependencies all go inward. Uh, uh, I didn't explicitly, um, but that is that is the case. Uh, and the dependencies can get a little complicated because they're dependencies. There are different kinds of dependencies, um, but in general, the idea is that dependencies flow inward uh, all the way into the and and the domain is, and so each layer from inside out has no awareness of that outer layer. And that's that's really important. Um, and so that yeah. sort of reaffirms the idea that domain has no idea of anything else. Um, application ha layer has has awareness uh, and, and has direct dependencies and calls basically calls methods on the domain, uh, but not the other way around. Um, and there's some stuff about inversion of dependencies, but I don't, I don't wanna go, go too deep into that uh, just yet until we see sort of some concrete applications of that. I think there's a follow-up question from- Yeah, so, um, so can we use API first uh, and hexagonal architecture same time? I'm not sure what you mean by API first. Uh, so you'll have to clarify that. Um, but the idea is that um, here, in the diagram, I show it as user interface, but there's also external message bus. All these could be APIs. They could be server-side rendered HTML like we're doing in, in uh, the Song Themes application, um, or they could be an, a, a RESTful API, or they could be an RPC API. Uh, it's totally up to you what you need. Um, the important thing is that the application layer and the domain layer do not change. Um, they are there to provide the implementation for what is what problem you're trying to solve. You're, so, you're trying to solve some domain problem, likely some business problem, um, and all that is inside of, of your domain supported by the application layer to sort of manage integration with things. Uh, but generally, so this is sort of the structure, but you do want to do outside in, and maybe that's what you meant by API first, which is you, still need to start with like, what does the UI look like? What is the flow of operations? What do users see? And then what, what are they able to do? And then what do they see as a result? Uh, and there are various techniques like event modeling and some other, uh, and story mapping and things like that that allow you to, to sort of organize that. Um, and whether it's an API or a UI, the, the, the idea there is, is the same. Um, Good. Yeah. I did a quick Google search. I found something about API first furnish. Um, yeah, well, uh, I, I want to know what 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 Phil Nelson meant by API first rather than ah, just whether it was an arbitrary term. Right, 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 right. Uh, the problem with some of these, like um, uh, I had a question asked yesterday about domain services. Like I know what I mean by domain services and I know what mm. Eric Evans meant by domain services, but what other people mean by domain services is actually something completely the opposite. Um, so Good point. Uh, yeah. Uh, so in terms of the package structure, um, we all we actually started uh, organizing our stuff according to hexagonal architecture. Um, and so I generally structure things uh, according to adapters um, and then application and domain. So those are sort of my three top level things. And you can actually see that. Uh, and I'll share also the project. Uh, see that. Here in my Ensembler tool, um, sort of at a high level, let's see, Let me minimize some of this. And so we can basically see so we've got adapter, and then there's um, in and outbound adapters. So the in is, is what is what is triggering things to happen. Um, and I've got those subdivided into uh, admin facing functionality and member facing functionality. Um, and then I've got various out, which is basically things that I need to talk to in order to get things done. So email, JDBC, um, Zoom, all, all sorts of things. Uh, then I have application and I consider, most people don't organize it this way, at least from what I've seen, but I consider ports as part of the application layer because the application layer talks to, to ports to get things done. Um, and ports are the abstraction for our outbound uh, adapters. And then there's domain, which is all of the magic stuff. And 
Uh, if your domain is large enough, you'll probably split the domain along uh, functional lines. You may even split your application into a multi-module, in which case you'll see uh, application and domain um, sort of underneath an, another layer. But uh, one of the things you'll also notice, perhaps, is the coloring that's used for the, uh, the background uh, of these different packages. Uh, those align with, with how I color my diagrams. So yellow for domain, sort of a peach orange for application, um, blue for inbound, and, and sort of purple lavender for, for outbound. Did you set that up yourself? Um, I did, and I actually have a video that walks through how to do that, so you can check it out on YouTube. I'll find a link for that in a bit. Cool. Um, yeah, so that was that was the quick run through of and and we'll see we'll see as as the song thing application grows, we'll we'll start to see it filling out and fleshing out, um, especially the application layer, which is which is probably what we'll deal with next. Lost my mouse. There it is. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Glad. Glad I helped. And if you haven't watched it, I have a whole video on uh, on on this where where I go through in a little bit more detail hexagonal architecture. And again, that's on on my YouTube channel. Um, and I'll find the link for that uh, as well. Uh, so Aya says, in my experience, the client will cause application layers interface to change. So I feel we shouldn't build too much application layer too soon. Yes. Yes. And this is, again, sort of the outside in developments, right? You got you, you hopefully start with, what does the client need? And therefore, what do I need from the API? What does the API need to support? And then, then you can say, OK, well, what does the API then need from the application layer? Is it something that's already there that we just need to hook up? Um, or are we developing something new where we now need to add new functionality to, to the application layer? Um, and I often uh, um, will even implement some code that eventually will end up in the application layer. I'll implement that in the uh, the adapter temporarily um, and use the refactor opportunities to, to push it into the right place. Um, yes, package structure is hard because you're trying to... to, to so there's... Um, uh, a problem in that you have a choice. Do you use the package structure fully to say this is what the project is about and, and leave technical concerns aside, um, which is a completely valid way of doing it. Uh, I tend a little bit towards pulling in technical because I want the package, at least in Java, I want packaging to save me from accidentally doing things like having the application layer invoke something on an adapter. So there is this tension where the packaging mechanics of, of a language like Java are just not sufficient to get us both. And so I made the decision of, yes, it means that my, my top level things are adapter uh, and application and domain, but I get the benefit of being able to use a tool like ArcUnit to enforce domain should not talk to application in terms of invoking. And application should not invoke a method on, on adapter. And adapter should invoke methods on other adapters. Um, so it's it so it it's it's hard to to get the best of both worlds. Uh, so you have to sort of lean one way or the other. Um, sort of vertical slice architecture says just organize everything around the feature and then within that do that. And in a sense, that's what I do. If I had more features, you'd probably see sort of duplicate um, sort of trees there. But uh, package structure is hard, is the, is the TLDR. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so if we look at what we're what uh, what we want to do here, um, we don't want to just add a repository for no reason, right? We have to have something right. that drives it. So we're we're uh, we're gonna say, well, what do we want to do, right? We want to 
a not have to type this stuff in every time the application starts up clearly uh so do we want so in a sense what functionality do we want that will lead us down the road of eventually at least coming up with an in-memory version of a repository and that's probably the ui to add uh a song i, I would think oh i see that's why you're heading towards yeah, so because because again, from the outside in, we may not create the UI, right. but we want to figure out what is the UI, what information is it going to send? Uh, uh, because then that we can say, okay, and this is where uh, sometimes we we'll, we we'll use the term middle out, um, or I think you you use subcutaneous, which is basically the same thing. It's like let's start one one layer below the UI because the UI is kind of messy and and we actually don't need that in order to implement the rest, but we do need to figure out what is what is the thing need to support. That's it's almost question. is like your question. Oh, sorry. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'm say. Um, so it's more along the lines of um, add a song just below the UI or something like that. Yeah. So um, this is applicate. This is basically use case. What is the use case for adding a song? Um, right. And it's really interesting to see sort of use cases come back a bit in, in popularity. I think that's one of those uh, became really popular, but then it became too overly formal and, and long and, and, and people didn't like it. And so reacted to that by basically just tossing it overboard and getting rid of it and not using it at all. Uh, but I think there's with domain driven design and, and some of the architectures have sort of brought back this idea of, of a use case. Um, and what, and Alist Alistair Coburn talks a lot about that because he wrote books on the topic. And what's in this context, what's your definition of use case that we're looking at? Uh, it's pretty much, um, I want to add a song that doesn't exist to the database, pretty much. And then there's like, what are the different conditions? What are the different uh, failure cases that we need to handle? Um, so to me, that has each one of those is a scenario of of the use case. But the use case is, how do we add a song? And what are the contents of that? Uh, and what do we? Um, yeah, pretty much that. So then that would have like sort of sub. Right, and here because what we're what we're asking the application to do is not terribly complex. There aren't a lot of right. rules and processes around this. Um, it'll yeah. be relatively straightforward. Um, but we do have to figure out, well, what information are we collecting? So that's where we're, we'll have to start defining what is a song. Right. Um, and how are we adding themes? So right now we might just say, OK, just type those as freeform text, but we Probably, I don't know. Do we want to constrain those? Are you picking from a list of existing themes? Yeah, the idea is I had meant to find the only example I have is is a of a UI example is a bit um, it's proprietary, so I can't show you. Mm -hmm. uh, or you know, it gives away people's names. But I've I've seen one where it's along the lines of it's kind of like tag. It is like a tag, mm -hmm. um, and as you type it narrows down out of the existing themes mm -hmm. which ones and you could select you know one or more and then each one would sort of be um i'll just fake draw a ui here um and then let's just do this right and then you could have and so that would be like one theme so as you're typing the word mm -hmm. new, and there's if there's only one theme that starts with new, it would flesh it out to New Year's. And then the little X is an indication of, no, 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 I changed my mind. Delete that right. from the find. Right? right. So then there'd be a second one. Right. So what you defined is, is the UI um, right. and the UI interaction. What I'm interested in is the constraints around where do these tags come from? So yes, there's autocomplete and things like that. Can I can I type an arbitrary thing like uh, Black Friday? Right. No. Okay. Yeah. So that's because um, it's that... going to have to come from a fixed set of data. 
Okay, so that uh, is new to me. Ah, uh, we, really? We haven't, we haven't discussed that. Ah. We haven't discussed where themes come from. Um, in which case, we're missing a whole set of stories around where do these theme tags come from, and who edits them, and who's allowed to edit them. Interesting. I I assumed that it comes out of the ad, and the ad you can assign themes, and if it doesn't exist, it adds the theme. That's why there's the whole concept of. Um, Wait. Uh, let me go back. To, let me grab you, the. You just contradicted yourself, or at least the way I understood it, because a minute ago you said you have to pick from an existing theme. You could not add one on the fly, and but now you're saying that that you're adding. Themes. Well, it depends on the role. So the oh, administrator okay. can. That's why I was trying to get the Miro board up. Oh. Uh, give me a sec. Um, I can get it up. No worries, I got it. All right, you got it. Um, so if you remember, so the 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 maybe not. Well, clearly not clear because you didn't get it. Um, where, yeah, uh, administrator adds a single song and its theme, right? But you know how we have a visitor, or what is the term we use? No, member. Uh, contr member. Contributor, uh, contributor. Contributor. Submits a song, adds a single song and its theme. Uh, yeah, so nowhere did you mention anything about because we never got into it and into right, that right, level right. of detail. Uh, but what, where I was going to, I wasn't yeah. actually done. So oh, I'm sorry. When contributor adds a song, it can be any theme. Mm -hmm. But because the theme doesn't automatically go in until an admin approves it. So, say, as an example you gave last week, say um, I decided to use the word Christmas to indicate all Christmas related songs, and somebody added a song with a theme xmas right a member mm -hmm. i could either say i reject because i don't want to have christmas and xmas in the theme list um interesting thought which i hadn't thought through is could i just change it or do i reject it and say please resubmit right with christmas that whole workflow i hadn't really thought about um so that was my that not that part but the part about the approval process is what is the gatekeeper, if you will, of which themes get added. The administrator can add whoever. <clears throat> administrator being me. <laughs> so, un uh, so under what circumstance? Because when you were when you were talking about adding uh, adding the theme and picking from an existing theme, you I said, can you you know put in an arbitrary theme? And you said no. But now you're saying yes. Well, so as an no, admin, admin you... it's yes to okay. contributor it's it's so to admin it's yes to member it's maybe depending Wait, on whether the contributor admin or or visitor. contributor sorry okay um and then visitor can only pick from well visitor can't the... add so so that's right. that's a non non issue so, so I the... guess the answer to your question is it depends their role. Uh, so for admins, can they can you arbitrarily add a theme as you add a song? I would expect so. Yes. Okay. So that that's different from how I interpret it when you first explained it. So okay, when they're typing it in, and it auto and and there's nothing to auto complete, it should still allow them because they're the admin to type whatever they want. Exactly. From a curation standpoint, that's not necessarily a great idea um, because it can lead, even if it's just one, you know, one or two admins, it can really lead to a proliferation of uh, of themes. But it certainly does make it easier because then we don't have to restrict which themes are available. Um, but it right. does make the UI a little bit more difficult. Uh, but anyway, we don't care about what the UI looks like. What we care about is uh, whether, for example, we expect the theme to be something that uh, already exists in, in the database, or uh, you would have to go through, you know, so we don't have to go through some separate process to add add a theme, that it's done part of adding a song. Is that correct? Yeah, that was the original okay. vision. OK. Now, of course, you know, my vision could have been hallucination. So, uh... <laughs> well, and you know, and this is this is 
part of the iterative process. This right? is part of the process, right? This is where we say, hmm, maybe I do want that, or maybe I don't want that. Uh, and what was in your head wasn't wasn't what was in my head wasn't matching what you wanted. Right. Um, and as we get into more details, that becomes more clear, and hopefully, we're on the same page. Which is why you want the product owner in the same room. Yes, with you. exactly. <laughs> I wouldn't want to have to wait a week to have that conversation. Yeah. Uh, so Oya oh yeah, brings up some user has to be a trusted user. So yeah. So uh, do you want to mouse over to where we've defined the different users in the mirror? Oh, yes. Let me make this full screen too. The actors. Is that zoomed enough? Uh, maybe zoom in a bit more on the, on the actors. Yeah, so so admin is is we're assuming that right now the functionality is, is that we're building is only for the admin. So they uh, <clears throat> are known to the site and they have rights to do anything because they're the admin. Yeah. Um, the other role that that uh, we were talking about was contributor, which um, is also known to the site uh, and has the abilities to submit proposals for songs to be added. Uh, and or corrections to existing songs. You bring up an interesting point. Now, what's it, what's interesting for contributors is um, you could, and I, I don't want to, I maybe don't want to go too deep on that right now, but you could have them only select from existing themes and not add new themes. Um, right. Or, uh, or you could have some process where you where you basically say, uh, no, use this other theme, or just take it and you literally change the theme and then and then submit it, and the contributor has to live with your choice. Right, and I, there is an interesting that is an interesting idea where you contributor could just contribute a theme. Again, it's right. a little bit around the corner. It's not necessarily right away kind yeah, of thing. But yeah. They could contribute a theme, and that could be approved or disapproved. Right. Even if there is no songs yet. Exactly. Or like there's yeah. enough to go, oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. Right. And that and that starts getting into how are themes managed? Because right. there's because having uh so earlier in my career, I I worked on tools where you basically do literally this. Um, when I was at eBay, I worked on what was called the attribute management system, which is all about, uh, so imagine eBay, the auction site in the early 2000s, and you wanted to find a digital camera because that's what the, that's what you bought pre iPhones and pre, pre smartphones, you bought digital cameras. Um, imagine you wanted to find a, a digital camera that had uh, four megapixels of resolution and had this much memory and so on. Um, how would you search for that? Well, you'd have to assume that everybody typed in the right keywords and used four megapixels as opposed to four MP or four megpix or something like that. Um, and so in order to fix that problem, they wanted to assign attributes to categories and, and, and things like that. And that was a managed application. Uh, and I led the development of building that and building basically what's a taxonomy is... is uh, very important that it be curated. Um, and you do things like say, oh, we're seeing a lot of 20 megapixel cameras. We don't have a category for that, so we need to create one. Oh, we're seeing these. Do we want to group these together? It's 16 to 20 megapixels. So let's take all those and and, and basically crunch them down into, into one. Um, so there's there's a lot of management of like, if we see Christmas and Xmas, are those the same things? We still maybe want to, do we, is, there a, is there a difference? If there's no difference, then we should not, and we should basically just replace all Xmas with, with Christmas and get rid of that that theme. Because um, at some point, it doesn't stay, in, you, there's no way to have it in your head anymore. And now you're seeing like, oh, actually, these two things are the same. Or or these two things are, are actually different. Uh, and this is funny how it, 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 it's very much real, similar to the idea of ubiquitous language. I had a thought that popped up that I wanted to write down before I forget. Yeah. Um, is we hadn't really talked about. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna write it as I think it. 
uh, draft early releases. Just to give you an idea of where my vision was, mm -hmm. where my head was at, was version one would be uh, site has songs and themes that admin entered. V2 add concept of contributor. Mm -hmm. Caps lock, my friend. Right. Um, I mean, these are just high. I mean, I'm really the the first two is what I was thinking about. Right. Was at first it would be just the stuff I put in. Mm -hmm. Let's. In other words, that's when I feel like, hey, if I've got a fair amount of data, which I do, now it's useful to the world. Now it goes from being a URL that says coming soon mm -hmm. to here's something. Right. And then now had, hey, do you want to contribute? Right. And then maybe V3 would be the concept of a member. Right. And I haven't really thought beyond this. I literally only sure. came up with this like five minutes ago. Yep. <laughs> um, but that might be something I want to move into Jira uh, to, uh, you know, we can keep poking away yeah. at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so full enough ask, uh, when you handle role, when would you handle roles before or after finishing ad song feature? Yeah, so so what's interesting is is like roles are domain, um, but there's also a very technical aspect to it. Um, and when we add it, I would probably say is is when we need it. Um, so like in the V1 plan, clearly we're going to need a way to recognize admin uh, versus anonymous visitor. So in order to do that, that's when we would we would uh, introduce introduce at least one role, and then we would introduce the contributor role when there's a, a need for that. And so we'd introduce whatever is necessary around that as as we need it. Um, but there there's sort of a balance between introducing it too early, where it kind of gets in our way. Like right now, I would see no point in introducing any kind of security stuff until we have an actual database that we have to start protecting its data. Because um, once that's in production, you want to make sure that that nobody's messing with the data except you. Lots of good questions coming in. Yeah. Uh, searching could be interesting depending on how we implement it. Um, so we will never have enough data where uh, we have to implement anything like at the low level of, of B trees. That's my prediction. Um, because if we do, we will not be writing that. Um, we will delegate that to a database. Um, so I mentioned that because from, from one point of view, if we were just kind of, hey, I want to learn about B trees, then great. That would be a, a useful thing to do. But um we are not uh at least i'm not interested in, in that i'm more interested in the functionality um and and i want to point out that this is what gets developers especially um well this is what get develop gets developers into trouble is focusing on the technical complexity like oh b trees are cool i just learned about them let's go implement them in our production code. Now, I'm not saying that that the to attitude is suggesting that, but I've seen this over and time and time again, and we see the same thing with microservices. We see the same thing with other technologies, and um, I'm very much a boring technology kind of guy. I want boring. Uh, if I'm learning, that's different. But if I'm implementing stuff for, as a product or as, as some kind of application, I want boring. I want to use the database. Uh, I want to use a SQL or whatever database, maybe it's a document database, or maybe it's a uh, search-based kind of thing. Um, I want to be very careful about not reinventing things, because that's not my purpose. So um, be careful that when you read about shiny, interesting technologies, you don't start go using them in, in all over the place where they're not necessary. So yeah, exactly. That, you know, 
And but we do have this question of because we right now we're doing the search in memory. When do we say actually let's let the database do that? Um, and that decision will likely be coming up uh, relatively soon. Yeah, if admins mess up the 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 theme taxonomy that's that's on them, i.e., yeah, that's Mike's fault. <laughs> and I think uh, yeah, because it won't it just be me and. It'll be interesting to see if there ever will be an admin. Probably. It depends on how popular yeah. the site gets. So I can't imagine it gets that popular. So it'll probably yeah. just be me. Um, but if it's two people, then yeah, they need to huddle now and again and go, what do you think of this one? That's where you get into the human aspect of it, I think. I think yeah, and, and this, it yeah. a bit much. Uh, and this is where, you know, uh, I'm not. There's a lot of things I'm not a fan of of machine learning and LLMs, um, but this one is actually a perfect use for for it, where it can perhaps provide, "Hey, I'm seeing these themes; they seem to be similar. Do you want to combine them? Um, hey, here these this theme seems to be actually something we could subdivide into two. Do you want to do that? And so there's a lot of stuff there where, um, especially LLMs and and things like that can 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 help. And I always look at it as, um, don't do it for me, uh, but help guide me, um, uh, and and I'll do the actual thing. Yeah, it's possible there might be some scoring. Uh, for example, if you've got a bunch of songs and you're, or if you've got uh, a bunch of themes that you're searching on, do you show on? And we've talked about this before. Once we get into multi-theme search, I'm sure this will come up. Um, do you only show the songs that match all the themes you entered, or do you rank them in some way? And then what is that ranking algorithm? Uh, if you're going to have an admin role, you must have authentication. You can't really, there's no other way to do it, uh, unless you do security by obscurity, um, which is not really a great idea. Not at that point. Yeah. yeah. Great question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we have we'll we'll have different roles. Um, and yes, uh, whenever shiny technology comes, everything looks like oh, we can solve it with, with that. We can solve it with bloom filters. Like okay, been there, done that. <laughs> uh, and yeah, maybe somebody's already said this is how we solve this particular problem. Hey, the foobar fish. Yeah, interviews are, I mean, come on. Like, there's still interviews where they're asking you leak code questions and things like that, that have absolutely, that are, in fact, a way to get people who can't solve the problems that you have, because they're solving problems that are not the problems you have. Talk about the problems you have. And then you'll hire people who can help solve those problems. Um, I, I, so this, I mean, I remember when I when I interviewed for Google. What did I do? I sort, 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 you know, studied all the sorting algorithms and all sorts of stuff. And that's exactly what I was asked about. Is that stuff I did? Absolutely not. It had nothing to do with anything I was interviewed on. Zero. There was zero overlap between the hours of interviews and the thing I actually got to work on. Um, and that was true for for many companies. Uh, and unfortunately, it's still true today. Reminds me of one one interview I had, Ted, um, and it was a standard interview, right? Everybody, you know, a technical question, technical question, and then the last guy was supposedly the the well, not supposedly was the guru for this small company, and uh, you know, he kind of was kind of a hard ass, you know, asked hard things and was kind of you know rough, uh -huh. um, and he's like, yeah, I got this one thing, you know, I'm trying to, you know, trying to fix this, and it doesn't, I can't figure this out. And I'm like looking at the screen and I'm like, I felt like I was doing a Feynman moment. And I'm like, well, have you thought about that? And pointed at the screen and he's like, oh, that's it. <laughs> so got that job. Yes. <laughs> he yes. went from being gruff to like a super nice guy. Yes. And was yeah. a nice guy forever afterwards. Right? Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, it was pretty funny. <laughs> but yeah, I think that was an intentional interview too. No, right, right. right that was right. a accidental. Yeah. Um, yeah, the some of the be better interviews I've had is is, hey, come and pair program on this code that I'm working on. Yep. Um, and that's how I ended up having 
although I don't think it's there anymore, some code in, in uh, Cloud Foundry um, because I was pairing with somebody at Pivotal Labs. I, and we were working in Go, a language I had never worked in before. So it was that was interesting. Um, sure, pinky promise counts, absolutely. You can do that over the wire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, say, say, I like, I, if, I remember I, I had a phone screen and they were asking me the question of, if you have quarters and a balance and whatever it was, and I'm like, I'm the, I basically said, I'm not answering that question. What does this have to do with the job? I, and, and that interview did not really go anywhere, <laughs> unsurprisingly. But I was like, I'm sorry, I'm not like, you know, I'm a senior, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a senior staff level engineer. I'm not answering this bullshit question. Even though I didn't call it a bullshit question, I basically said, I'm not answering this question. Yeah. <laughs> what does this have to do with the job? Uh, there, there's an assumption that there is this idea of general problem solving ability. And I think that's the underlying thing for, for all these. I know we're on a tangent, we'll, we'll bring it back. Um, and that is simply not true. And it, it's, it's just a lack of understanding of, of how people solve problems and uh, how we learn and things like that. So. Hello, Mohai. Welcome. Welcome. All right. Um, Should we go back? So, to so let's go back out? to what 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 information comes in when we want to add a song. Right. So, is this what we want to do for our? Yes. And then there'll be other subs <clears throat> at some point. Yeah. So they'll. I mean. Uh, kind of discover. I mean, this we is, go. Yeah. We'll we'll see what what we run into as we as we get into what this looks like. So there's going to be parts of the song itself. What information is that? Um, and then themes. Uh, and since, and so this, I, I keep coming back to themes because if I, you know, how do you handle things like typos? So let's say, because we're probably not going to start the UI, the initial implementations with sort of autocomplete. So, um, and even if you do, you can still have typos. So what do we do about that? Um, so let's say you know you type New Year's with no apostrophe, and I type New Year's with an apostrophe. Uh, which one do they both get accepted? And now there are two themes, right? Right. And so that's sort of the downside of automatically creating themes is is you can end up accidentally with multiple themes. Um, this happens to me all the time. I use a tool, uh, or at least I used to use it more. Uh, called pocket. And one of the things you can do is add tags. Um, and it had exactly that scheme of it will autocomplete, but will also, if you type something that is not in its tag database, it will just create a new tag. And I've ended up with like sometimes half completed tags like web des, D E S, <laughs> instead of web design because I didn't hit the right key to autocomplete it. Um, and I hate that because now there's no, they don't provide the tools to, to, to manage that very well. Hmm. Um, so these are the kinds of things that, that, uh, Keep thinking about we'll it. eventually want to want to think about. Yeah. But for now, we can make the simplifying assumption of whatever you type will accept. Right. Well, again, starting simple and growing yeah. from there. Yeah. So you asked a question about what is a song. Yes. Is that the next conversation? I, I, at least what is the song at this level? Because again, it's going to be iterative. Um, but what's right. sort of the minimal requirements for right now? Yeah. So I would say artist, which really means slash band. Mm -hmm. Some are. And that'll get into some ubiquitous language. What are we calling that? Right. Um, we could call it artist slash band. That would be acceptable if we feel like we can't pick one or the other. Yeah, I'm fine with just using artist, frankly. Um, uh, so for me, the first two are required, you know, like old Lang Syne, right? Mm -hmm. Is I just want to know which one they're asking for. Now this yeah. brings up, now actually, now that I say it out loud, is there the idea of 
a song without an artist. In other words, the song is done by so many people that like Oh Lang Syne, we know what it mm -hmm. is. Right. But I mean, I can't imagine I wouldn't associate it with someone. Would anyone want to submit so a song without an artist? That seems like a corner case. So I think at first I would, Yeah, my I mean, mental thought is those two would be required. Yeah, I mean, you know, there are certainly going to be songs that are going to be added that might be in some database somewhere. Um, and But I think that's probably a later piece of functionality where it could help you pick the song that you're going to, uh, that you're going to enter. Oh, I mean, you start typing and it finishes right. the title of the song. Right. Um, or you type, you know, maybe not old length sign, but, but something else. And it says, which, you know, which artist version artist plus version are you are you looking at you know this song which was the live version from 1981 or this version that was on the ep or this version that was um, right which... so there's there's all sorts of things that again sort of it can assist you with with entering that but i think uh to start we would probably not want to not want to deal with that i got an interesting one and i I think we had talked about it offline before we even started this project. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember if we talked about it or not, but I think we did. Was um, differentiating between um, songs with same title, but are different songs. Mm -hmm. In other words, right. cover versus not cover. That's which I'm not sure how ubiquitous the term a cover song is, but in the DJing world, it's known as, you know, not the original, but it's mm -hmm. the same song, just sung by a different artist um, or right. performed by a different artist. Probably a better right. way of putting it, yes. always singing. Right. Um, and then there's just a song that happens to have the same name. Yeah. Just happens to have the same name because like, there are bands like, with the same name. Because there, there are bands with the same name, yes. Right. So that'll be another one. Right. Uh, <laughs> And hopefully we'll handle this better than Spotify does. How do they do it? They just look at the name of the band and assume they're the same. How do I know this? Really? Because, because I get suggestions in my Discover playlist for a band called Asia, which is not the one you're, you're probably thinking of. And it's like, what the hell is this crap? Um, Interesting. And I got another one for Zebra. It's like, no, that's not the Zebra that I like. That is a totally different thing. And it is not at all that band, and I don't know why you think it is and why you're suggesting it. Interesting. Uh, but Discord clearly they, does the paren thing. Yeah, so the, clearly Spotify, at least in how they are structuring their data, does not differentiate, or at least it doesn't surface it that way. Maybe internally they do, but I mean, I'm sure there's some unique identifier um, because when you bring up the actual band. So it must be for some parts of it, like for whatever their machine learning suggestion recommendation stuff, it ignores the fact that this zebra is not this other zebra. Um, because if you go in and say, show me the the, the discography for, for my zebra, uh, it does not show this other album. So clearly it, it does differentiate it, but it, in the oh. recommendations, it's apparently ignoring that, which is really yeah. stupid and annoying. But I don't have no, to. No, come on. Tell us how you really. Think. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, just a few things to think about for future. Yeah. So, we mentioned typos already. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, there are certainly lots of covers of, of, of some songs. And... Yeah. Yeah. They rarely mark them as covers. Yeah. Uh, you can, if you sort of drill down into credits, you can figure out that it's a cover. Um, right. But also, like, just because it's a, it, what's the difference between a cover and the f the artist recording a song written by another songwriter, before the songwriter themselves made this or right, you know, which is a cover, which is a cover, right? You know, Pat Benatar's song that uh, John Mellencamp wrote. It's like, well, which you know, which is the original? Um, certainly, Pat Benatar's is, is known better, but uh, yeah, there's all sorts of interesting stuff 
minutia. Yeah. Which is which is why like I always tell developers focus on the interesting stuff that's in your domain and not the shiny technology. Yeah. Uh, date year of release, so that might help differentiate some of it. Right. Um, but in terms of what we want to enter now, uh, the question will become: How much data do you want to enter that's minimal? That's still going to be useful to you. Like, is is that enough to be useful to you personally? Because that's really all that matters. Yeah. Um, the moment the three that are starred are what come to mind as use immediately useful. Okay. There will come a point where it's like, oh, the um, seven inch single version of that song is actually a different, has lyrics about blah, but not or the other way around. Maybe mm -hmm. the full length version that's five minutes versus the two and a half minute version does have references to theme X, whatever that is. Right. Um, so that's that's a whole not I was thinking about that, but that's definitely a next level kind of thing. Um, right, right. But there will be a point where but it's important, but it is important. And so yeah, you know, and mean, that might be where we start getting into um, which you know I really don't want to have, right? A nodes field. Um, <laughs> but it could be a I don't know if I want to show you. I mean, you might want a notes field, but yes, it it can but start accumulating things that you want in to be, more concrete categories. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to see if I have my spreadsheet. Yeah, I do. Oh, that's interesting. Apple Music can't differentiate between songs in different Indian languages. Really? That's interesting. Ooh. <clears throat> yeah. I, did I show this before? I can't remember. Uh, I don't think we showed it on publicly. Yeah. Uh, publicly. I'm not sure it's um, particularly a problem to do that because it's all stuff entered by me. Um, my artist band, song title, release title, format, whether it's a compilation or not. Um, that ties in with release title, which I believe. Yeah, that's funny because uh, 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 my son and I were in the car the other day and listening to, to some Tom Petty. It's like, which album was that on? It's like, oh, it wasn't on an actual, it wasn't on an album album. It was on uh, uh, the a greatest hits or compila a compilation. It's like, well, really? There was a new single on the compilation? Is that where it's from? And now I have to go do more research. But um, like sometimes not all songs that are, Anyway, yeah, there's all sorts of stuff around. Well, that. there's a whole different thing. So what you call a right. compilation, I don't. So I was, yeah, we were discussing like, is this a compilation? Is this a greatest hits? What do we call this? Right, like Discogs. Uh, yeah, has these two meaning the same thing? Mm. To me, compilation equals various artists. Oh, interesting. So, okay. to me and the radio station I volunteer at, okay, they are so. They are not the same, whereas in Discogs, they're the same. Interesting. Because <laughs> what, um, we we, what we were sort of discussing is like, which one of these fulfills the record contract that the that the uh, band was under? It's like they had a ten record. Like we we're talking about, Rush has had a had a their first contract was a ten uh, a ten album contract. It's like, so do live albums count? Okay, but do collections where it's it's just songs we've already recorded and released uh or is it songs we've, we've recorded but never released or different right. versions of songs we've already released what do you call those and do those fill a contract and so it was yeah, an interesting yeah. conversation that neither one of us had any information about yeah yeah <laughs> but totally. like this this can totally uh affect what you know what song what's what's what song it is like, what is a song? And I don't know what to call this one, you know. So in the compilation column of the spreadsheet, which, where'd it go? Um, 
I started out just saying compilation or not. Mm -hmm. And here I actually wrote down collection mm -hmm. just for the first time right. to differentiate. So this is Nancy Sinatra mm -hmm. just came out like a month ago. It's a collection mm -hmm. of old uh, rarities. So some of it's mm -hmm. singles, some of it's stuff that's never been released, demos, right. rarities. Um, so I was like, well, maybe I'll put in collection just for giggles. Right. Let me see if I have anything else in here. I'm guessing soundtrack would be the other word I had in that column. Uh huh. Right. Right. Because it's, I don't know what to call it. I'm calling it VA, which is not really, when we come back to uh, here, you know, you know, soundtrack is release type a good name for that instead of, I don't know. And again, yeah, I want to yeah. punt on that. I don't want to consider right, that early right, version. Right. Um, I mean, I think the important thing is, is like, if you find us, if you find an entry in our, in this database, can you go play the song? Right. Cause if you can't, or you play the wrong one, like maybe you play the radio edit instead of the full version. And it doesn't have, like you're saying those lyrics, um, that would kind of not be so, what you want. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So it's it's really does it define it well enough at least for you to to know oh okay it's that one and be able to play it. That's really the question. Yeah, and so for now I think we can do yeah. without that. Yeah. Record yeah. labels, another one, not necessary. Right. Maybe it will be at some point. Maybe this is a radio only thing. Um, o, um, meaning it needs to be edited to be played. Right, on the radio. has some objectionable. Yeah. Yeah, federal U.S. United States. There's Right. The federal communication and there's certain words and things you can't utter on the radio. Right. Um, but that the reason I popped this up was the notes column because to see what right. right. You know, some of them um yeah, this might be too much of a this is a big tangent. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna dig into that one right now. Yeah. Um but yeah, and I think all the rest of the columns I think are themes. Oh, and then we had kicked around the idea of link to the music or link to right. the lyrics. Right. I think we can add those. And later. then contributor. Uh, that one well, was that, probably well, you out of the and, gate. Well, no, but it's easy because it's always going to be you. Right. Until until you allow somebody else. So that would be an easy, you know, up Triangulate into it or not even up, triangulate. It, it's just, you know, when we add that column, it's just always the default will be Rizzy when, when we yeah. do the database migration. So right. that part, that one's easy. There we go. So I think these four are fine. OK. Theme, artist, song title, release title. All right. Um, do you think title actually if I, if you just saw release would that be clear to you or is release no, is title it clear to one? you what is clear to me then that's all that matters well oh from a because you're because you're the you're the you're the, you're the main customer right so. but i'm meaning from a, somebody visiting the website if we had a we displayed data and we said release would you think release means the album title I don't want to call it album title because it could be a seven inch single. Which right. Doesn't have. That's why it's not, it doesn't say album title. It says release title. I think I'm if I like... saw a column header of release and actually something, some concrete example of that, um, it would be really clear what it was. Okay. And that's, we could. Which know, is different yeah. for, uh, for data entry um, where I'd have to know, what do you mean by release? And there we could maybe, you know, assume that, the contributor understands what that is, that they're right. more informed about your taxonomy and, and right. You I could yeah. say something like, you know, album or single title. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, We're at the top, aren't we? Yes. So uh we'll answer this question, then we'll take our break. Um so Fulnoff asks, when should we use database migration? Uh which phase of the project? Um when you start writing stuff to a real database that you where you care about the data that's already been entered. So you can go a fairly long period of time in the beginning where, A, you're not even writing to a database, which is what we'll do, we'll write to stuff in memory. Eventually, we're going to want to do a little bit of data entry, um, and we're not going to have to want to type that each time or hard code it in the application. So that when we actually start writing to a real database is when you want to use your data migration because you don't want to try to add it after you've already created your schemas. You want to pretty much start out of the gate because um, especially with something like Flyway and, and I, I don't know as much about Lycobase, but I assume it's similar. You just define what is your schema. You're gonna have to define that anyway. So you may as well define it in, in your migration uh, tool of choice. But it's a good question. 
All right, let's take our break. How long do you want to take? You could do five. All right, we'll take our five minute break. Um, and when we come back, we'll dig a little deeper into what, what we're going to store. Sweet. All right, let's see you in five.
All right. Uh, so just a reminder to folks who are watching, um, <clears throat> you can find out uh, more about me and where to find me on social media, LinkedIn, Mastodon, etc. Go to ted.dev slash about. And if you want to chat about stuff in detail that comes up on the stream, like hexagonal architecture or testing and test driven development, things like that, uh, go ahead and check out uh, my Discord community where we talk about exactly that. Uh, and also we have uh, a book club. Um, we're currently about two thirds of the way finished with a book, but we'll start be starting a new book sometime next year. So be sure to uh, join and so you can stay informed about that. All right. Uh, yeah. Boy, that coffee was good. I wish I could, coffee. <clears throat> yes, I wish I could have actual more coffee, but it's too late to have more coffee. Yeah. Um, right. Get some more questions before we dive yes. in. Yes. Yes. So, uh, so this is a, a really interesting question. So um, there's obviously no data migration, but there is um, the need to create basically mappings. Uh, so depending on, on how you do your database support, you could um, directly store your entities. And by entities, I mean domain entities. You could directly store your domain objects um, into the database using tools like Hibernate and JPA and things like that. Um, hexagonal architecture says, no, don't do that. Uh, in fact, most <clears throat> separation of concerns architectures say, don't do that. Don't mix your concerns. So what's nice about um, separating those concerns is, is then there is no migration. It's not like we're having to, to change something that we've already written. Uh, we create our domain objects as we find it convenient and uh, best and sort of optimized for code and testing. And then we just have to figure out how to convert that and map that to the database. Um, but we'll look at look at we'll we'll see that pretty quickly is uh, it, it especially with um, the snapshot pattern makes it really nice to separate the state of the object from uh, from sort of the object-oriented uh, and well-encapsulated objects that we have. Um, one thing we haven't talked about, and <clears throat> we probably don't necessarily need to talk about right away, but sooner or later we will, which is, do we do event sourcing for, uh, do we do event sourcing or do we do state sourced for right. your song database? Yeah, it's, I mean, the big reason for doing event sourcing is to know, well, one big reason is why did that change? Right. Why did that change and what was it before? Right. Because um, you may not necessarily care why it changed, but you may want to know perhaps when it changed when. and what was it before. Um, Hmm. And there's an interesting trade-off also around changing, so speaking of sort of changing the, the structure of, of the thing. Um, migrating the data is in one way harder because you're having to now say every event has to now have new data because we've added, hey, we've now added uh, release, in addition to release title, the, the version of it or whatever we're gonna call it. And so we'd have to have have our events versioned. Um, on the flip side, um, I th the there's no database migration because the database, when it stores an event, just stores a blob. And so there's no, uh, yeah, there's no there's no change needed on the right on the writing side on the change side. Um, it does, of course, mean we'd have a read side for convenience sake. Uh, so 
like everything else, there's trade-offs. <laughs> um, but it does make the initial code a little bit harder to work with. Um, and my my sense is, uh, when things are unstable, you probably don't want to start with event sourcing. Um, but I, I don't think it would be too much. I don't think it'd be too difficult to do that. So at some point, we'll Just have to decide that. Start with it or switch over if we, I was, my understanding was switching was harder. From well, so it, switching is, uh, so switching is harder because you now have to change the way the, the object is written. Um, so, so it's, yeah, so it's really the object that, that um, makes things difficult to, to switch. Um, the data switching is is actually, I think, the easy part. Mm -hmm. um, but you're going from uh, commands change state to commands generate events and events change state. But there aren't a lot of commands here, so I don't. I for for this app, I don't see switching being all that difficult. That hard, yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah. And you say storing is a blob. And my brain went down this path. It's like, so how different is a relational database storing a blob from a NoSQL style database? Um, in what sense? I'm not sure. I just, it made me go, <clears throat> huh, how would I so never for really example, thought about comparing? Yeah. Them. So, for example, Postgres makes it very easy to store a JSON blob in a column. So, yeah, that's um, basically the same thing. And it doesn't even have to be a JSON blob because databases have always supported blobs, right? Of Which just some large object that it doesn't, it has no insight into what's inside of it, uh, right. and for our purposes, it shouldn't care. Um, so yeah. Well, that, shall we get back to it? Oh, sorry, you were still. I mean, we'll we'll have to decide pretty soon which way we want to go. Um, yeah. But let's. Uh, Let's go back to our initial V1 release of Song, um, which is it has. So, does it have the first three or first four? Just the stars. These okay. are acquired. Okay. All right. So if you want to do minimum, right? The minimum necessary. Yeah. At this point. Well, it's also, I mean, it doesn't cost us much to add more. Um, and so, it, you know, because if it's just it's just data. Um, In that case, I would do the first four then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as full now mentions, <clears throat> uh, event sourcing need a framework. Uh, no, you do not have to be at the tyranny of frameworks. You can write code yourself. Um, and I would say I would not use a framework. For, for this in terms of supporting event sourcing. Yes, it's certainly possible you might implement stuff that the framework provides out of the box. But like all frameworks, you are now taking on all of their complexity. And I've looked at Axon and it's a very nice framework, but it is a lot of complexity that I feel would be overkill for something like this. Um, so you do not have to always adopt frameworks. And on that same route, is the idea of by implementing it yourself at least once, you now understand the framework way deeper than you ever, or maybe not ever will, but then you, it'll make it easier to understand what a framework gives you versus yes. not give you. Yes. And then you can make a An more educated decision yeah. Yeah. Uh, about which, to, which way to go. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And, and I think, um, I think it's. I think it it really helps to have implemented stuff. Even if you end up using a basically what you said, and I think it applies to to any framework that you might pull in, whether it's a Spring Boot or a Corcus or even smaller frameworks, um, having done and written the code that the framework provides gives you a better understanding of what it supports. Uh, and where you might find maybe you don't need the framework. Um, so I was reading a series of articles of someone who is who's basically here's how I I moved away from Spring Boot 
and it's a totally valid uh, thing to do. Yeah, you know, Spring Boot and Spring Framework has a lot of complexity, but of course it brings you a lot of benefit. You don't have to wire things together yourself. Uh, but I think it's important to understand what is going on underneath the framework. Um, at least in the Java world, most of them are going to build on the servlet uh, specification, which has been around pretty much forever, as long as the web has been around. Um, and if you understand that and filters and interceptors and these things, then you will have a better understanding of what the framework is doing. And then when you have to troubleshoot things, you'll, you'll understand it better. But you don't have to use frameworks and or you don't have to use all the framework that the framework provides. Uh, you might use pieces of a framework, and so you're using it more as a library. But um, frameworks certainly have their, their downsides. Um, and, then, and this is one of the downsides. So uh, I've worked on large applications where we had a home-built framework. Um, and it meant that, so I say, if you're going to use a framework, you're better off using one that's public because then people can learn from it uh, outside and they'll have to learn from it only inside your company. So if you're going to go to a framework, prefer one that is public um, or open source yours. Uh, but it's unlikely to get traction. It's going to be very, very uphill battle. But uh, unless your framework is doing something very specialized, don't create your own framework. Um, and so uh, that's the downside of, of sort of not adopting a framework is now somebody has to understand the code you've written. But if it's well-written code and well-structured, well that shouldn't be a problem. But if it's turned into a framework because now you have a bunch of applications inside your big corporation that relies on it, now you've got a different situation. Uh, and I certainly know of companies that have developed their own internal framework and then switched over to something like Spring Boot specifically so A, they can stop maintaining their own thing, and B, so they can find people in the marketplace who know how to do the framework instead of some internal thing. Uh, yes, so that was that, that was the series uh, I was referring to. Um, uh, I, I wish the author paid a little bit more attention to um, spell checking and grammar checking, uh, either English is not that person's native language, or they they could use some editing, but I found some of it hard to understand because some of the word choices were wrong. Um, but yeah, um, so that was that was what sort of sparked that. Uh, so Xproof asks inter what are interceptors, request interceptors and filters, and I would suggest doing some research on servlet and those topics. Uh, you will. Uh, be well served if you're doing Java stuff to, to understand what those are. Yeah, and it would be nice, yes, if we could have a little bit more flexibility in, in our frameworks where we didn't have to sort of adopt everything whole cloth. Um, but a lot of times the framework, some of the frameworks benefits come with that and uh, well, things like field level field injection, yeah, I wish you could just turn that off. Um, I know you can certainly have linters and things like that to say, don't do that because you really shouldn't do that. It's just a bad idea. Don't do that. Constructor should constructor injection should be the only injection. All right. Um, so when we add a song with a theme, um, the question always comes up when you when we're thinking about what tests would we write is how do we know that worked? Well, we would then go back and ask for that theme and that song should show up. Right. So that's one way to do it. Um, the other the other way is to say, hmm, maybe we need to be able to search for a song by some of the attributes that we're about to other attributes that we're about to type in. But theme is, theme is certainly good enough to start. Um, since we already have that code, uh, we can basically build build on that. Right. And I think we did we did have searching by other attributes as a as a later story. Uh, later feature. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, so I think we have enough to 
start writing our test. Sounds good. I'm just going to run all tests just to make sure nothing. Of course. I didn't accidentally type something in a window, which I never do. That never happens. <clears throat> <laughs> OK. So we want to write a test. So are we thinking about doing this at the application level, outside in kind of thing? I guess that would be the case, because. Y yes. Um, uh, we're not at the stage of writing a DB out adapter. We're still writing the application layer for uh, creating, um, creating the songs. Yeah, it's still it's still not even a database because it's still not even a rep, there's no repository. There's right now there's a hash map. Yeah, um, in memory that the constructor yeah, populates. So it's, so it's in, <laughs> yeah, it's in memory. Write write once, uh, and, that, yeah. and that's it. <laughs> so this this will this will force us uh, to change that. Yeah, whether we like it or not. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is going to be um, uh, so our. Um, so currently, we don't have an application layer package. Uh, right now, our domain, song, uh, our song searcher is in the domain. Um, oh. And uh, but I think this is this is where we'll we'll start test driving our our use case layer. And that'll that'll force us to adapt uh, the song searcher as needed. No pun intended. Or maybe it was intended. Um, no, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so let's write a let's let's write a new test. Okay. Create a new package. So let's create a new test and a new package. So um, we want the package to be. Which, which package? Would you like? uh, so this will be in our application package. OK. Well, I guess I don't have to do it here. I could, but I could do. Yeah, you could right click on on the the, the, the higher level package. So so up from that. Right. Yeah, and then you can do new from there. Yeah. What were you calling it again? You said um, it, you got it. Um, well, first you want to type the, the new package name, so application dot. So we're basically doing two things at once. We're creating a new package and then the, the name of the class. Um, and for lack of a better better name, this would be uh, what song entry service, song creation service, song adder. Hmm. Do you like them to be verbs like song searcher? You said song adder, so I was wondering if you were looking for symmetry there. Um, there are sort of two schools of thought that uh, one is just add tack on the word service because people recognize that. Not that I necessarily <laughs> like it, but it is familiar. Um, on the other hand, I, I do prefer, if given a choice, more precise ones that are um, very much describing a, what what is the name of the use case. So you could say, you know, uh, actually, well, no, it's a you, song. Adder. You could say add song. Um, song adder basically makes it more more verby. Add song very much has a command flavor to it, right? Which is good because at this level, that's what we're talking about. Is sort of these high level commands. Okay. So we'll stick with that. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay, it's, it's different from what I what I usually usually do, do um, but in a good way. Okay, because we can also that's refactor it. names. That's the beauty yeah. of it. That's that's the beauty. So, oh, I just created it. You created, uh, but this is the test. So let's yeah. re let's rename it to be let's attack test on the on the end. Yeah. And this does not need to be public. Not that it matters. But you just delete it, or did you make it literally private? No, I just uh, you can't make it private, but we can delete the public. 
All right, so let's write our first test. Hey, how do we fix that? Um, it, it asked for J unit five. That's why I was like, right. Uh, because what, if we try to fix it, we would we can't use test containers properly. Uh, That's all right. Once you add the first one, then the others. Then it'll know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so what's our first test? So we can. <clears throat> go the zero one so whenever i'm faced with the blank page mm. syndrome i always think of zombies uh so we could go the zero one many and say zero but adding no song <clears throat> so so what does adding no song do for us um would only it would provide us with a test that given a new whatever when we when we try to search by theme we get nothing back And so that sort of provides us with the baseline is if the database is empty or at least has no songs of this theme, uh, we should get no songs found when we try to search by a theme. So we're we're saying add. So it wouldn't be add. add. <clears throat> it would be um, no songs added. Uh, there then no songs found. Oh, I see. Now I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So, so this it's will, basically this will, the scenario of yeah. Yeah. So this will this will help us define define the basically the API for talking to the to the use case. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's it's nice to try new things, um, but it's also nice to be consistent, and those are directly opposite. <laughs> Well, the search is is the is the uh, the assertion part, um, but we are still are adding. We're just not actually adding. Um, but adding nothing is still technically under under adding, is the way I think about it. If we've added no songs, we should find no songs. Um, then we then we'll add a song, and then we should be able to find it. So, what does it look like to? uh to do nothing and then find the song so it'd be just instantiating you know firing up an object and going hey do you have any songs <laughs> and it's going to say no right um, and this does bring up the question of <clears throat> does the add song application layer service does it provide the query functionality Or is that a separate thing? And so here's where if we just called it song service, it would be easier. Um, and we would just put both in, in one place. But uh, formulating as, as, as a more granular command-like thing, um, we do get into this question of, of uh, where is the functionality for doing the query? Now the query we don't have the query already out at the um, application layer. No, because we have no application layer. We have it in the domain layer, um, but we don't have it in the in the application layer. Is song themes application in the application layer? No, that might be my confusion. It's not. Ah, is that? Which layer would that be in if we put it in the package? Uh, be uh, configuration. Ah, right, right. We talked about that last week. Yeah. Okay, that's the source of my confusion. Yeah, yeah. Because it, by default, when you do the Spring Boot generate it, it acts on the word application, which can be confusing. Which is why, if we talk about it as use case, uh, perhaps it's not as confusing. Yeah, and maybe moving it into config sooner to eliminate. You could do that. Yeah, we don't have to do it right now, but we're in the middle of running it. Well, we have a failing. Oh, we don't have a failing test, do we? We don't have a failing test. Okay, so we could do it. Okay. 
And a move like that, moving one thing one place, I'm not concerned about. Yeah. Um, Do I just say config dot? Uh, no, no, you want to do yeah. a, a move, not a Oh, right. move, which is straight F6. F6, yeah. Not shift. Right. Uh, no, config would be at the end. Oh, yeah, sorry. Brain fart. And that's main. Yes, please. Sweet. Now, I take it back that this may actually cause some, some problems. So let's run all our tests. <laughs> um, because it depends on, on, on the auto scanning. Yeah. Um, and that's why I generally don't don't move that. So let's actually not do that because um, it's best if that actually stays at the at the top level. Really? Oh, okay. I thought you had said you usually move it into. A... Uh, that one is the one I don't move because I don't put any configuration in it. Uh, got it. So like the bean thing would go actually in a separate config class. Got it. So sorry. As soon as you did, it, I'm like, oh, I don't think that's gonna. <laughs> <laughs> because the way of and, the spring auto auto scanning for component classes and, and other things starts from wherever the application is defined and, and looks at nested uh, uh next level next level stuff. You can configure it differently. I, I try to avoid configuring stuff differently um if I really don't need to. Right, right, right. Totally makes sense. Got it. And you can't rename it to song themes config application because spring boot is looking for uh actually no you can you could totally rename that as long as it has this at spring boot uh application annotation um you could name it whatever the heck you want so what's important is that it has that annotation uh and it has that main method but the name of the actual class is irrelevant oh so if you want to just call it the song themes that's totally fine If you want to call it song theme startup, which I would think is a better name. And you yeah, I like that, that one better. Let's do that. That's shift F6. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I finally got to use it. Yes. Song theme startup. Is that what you yeah. said? Yeah. I like that. I like it too. Much more clear. Oh, name test with the following names. So uh, yeah, rename the test may as well. Yeah. Have it match. Quick. Yes. Sweet. And let's run all we should tests. probably we should run the test, then we probably should check in. Yeah. Uh, it's full enough. I asked, does song search uh, be in the application layer with respect to our hexagonal architecture? So the role of the uh, so song searcher right now is in the domain um, because it's only domain stuff. But we'll start seeing some of its behavior will probably move elsewhere, um, and we may end up with not much actually in the in the domain. Um, there will also be, so it's sort of hard to answer that question at this point. Um, but again, the way I think about the layers is, uh, does it concern itself with retrieving information from the outside world? If so, that's application layer. If it's already has everything it needs and just needs to execute code and rules and, and domain logic, then that's domain. All right, that worked. So, uh, did you want to commit? And we can yeah, we probably should avoid committing the, the the test that we haven't finished yet. Oh, right. So undo that one. Right. Mm -hmm. Was it just rename? It was just rename. Good enough. Perfect. Woohoo. Okay. So back to back to our original question of where do we put the behavior to uh, to execute the query of find me all the songs by this theme.
So it would be in the soon to be created surface layer. Right. Which doesn't exist yet. Right. Now song searcher is in the domain. Yes. But it's a very odd domain class. Yes. Be because uh, in the sense that it's different from probably how you would think about how applications work. Norm typically, with a domain layer, you'd have songs get found, and a song searcher, what the song searcher is currently doing would be done by the repository and or application layer. Right. Um, the way the song searcher is currently written is, is as if you go and ask the database, give me all the songs, and then you create a song searcher in memory to search it you execute the search and then that song searcher goes away which is certainly a valid way to go um but, but if you oh, sorry keep you going. Know, so so do, you know but do we in a sense want to stop doing that stuff in memory is really the question So if song searcher was always around, we just would load it once from persistence. Right. Um, and then we just keep it alive unless there's a change, obviously, and then you have to do a refresh. Right. Um, so the question is whether we want to continue with that model or? Right. Or, OK. Yeah, so do we want to continue going that way, in which case we would orient our, our use case layer around that. Um, but if we feel like, well, we really want the database to do that, or we want the repository uh, to, to do the bulk of the work, um, then in a sense, what we'd be doing is, is pushing Song Searcher into the use case layer, uh, and likely actually just deleting Song Searcher and retargeting our tests at the application layer. Mm. Part of me is thinking, well, deciding where to go, is this the last responsible moment for making that? Or are we I think this is I think this problem? is the last responsible moment. Because if we start putting effort into saying we want Song Searcher in memory that gets loaded and loads everything, that's that's a not that's a non-trivial decision because if we decide to change that, um, we basically throw away our song searcher and the supporting code in the in the application layer. Got it. So pros and cons of each are we don't have to do any of the we let the database do the searching stuff for us. Right. <clears throat> Performance-wise, it's probably not going to make much of a difference. Because we um, that many songs. So where is the, there? Well, so run. So what does performance mean, right? And this is right. um, this is where we look at what are what are most of the operations going to be? Are they going to be adding songs, or are they going to be finding songs? Mostly finding. If it's mostly finding, then you say what's optimal for mostly finding is have everything in memory so you never even have to hit the database at all. Right. Hey, Dudeman, welcome. Yeah, so Suiji, that's, that's kind of what we're talking about is do we say that Song Searcher is in a sense the aggregate, right? And so the aggregate could be the entire set of songs. That's totally valid. If that's the unit of editing, if that's the unit of transactional locking, uh, then it's all the songs. And then it's basically, you load all the songs, put them into the map, and then if you want to modify them, you modify the song searcher and re-persist the, the whole thing. Mm. From an editing standpoint, that's probably not very efficient. Um, so we'd probably want to say uh, that song searcher is the read model. 
um, and that like a cache, it would be invalidated uh, if there was a modification. So be, there would be a, still a separate aggregate representing modifying a song, um, and that would be song. That seems to make more sense to me, where the in-memory read model, song searcher becomes the in-memory read model. So it does seem weird to have to, okay, I'm going to rewrite the entire database. Right. So clearly that's not going to be the uh, a useful aggregate for, for changing. Yeah. Right. But it's but it, it's always interesting to, to think to, about it. To start there because that could be fine. Right. Um, <clears throat> and so since it's the, the read model, if we say that that's the read model, now we are introducing complexity around eventual consistency. Because somehow we have to signal the read model to refresh itself. Right. Um, or as part of writing it out, we basically go and, and refresh the read model. But this is still the time to make the decision one way or the other. Or did that shift? I think it. Much? I think actually in my head it's now shifted a bit because if we say that song searcher is the read model, then that's what we query against, and for now we reload the read model every time. Um, and so it's a it's a very inefficient read model because it's it's we read everything in and then we do the song search and then we dump it. Uh, although we but don't have to do that. But that's sort of conceptually how we we think about it. But um, that would just be for the period of time between when before add song is implemented, when it's just right. Isn't it? Once we start adding songs, then we could at that point implement the hey, we added a song, refresh thyself. That's yes. true, right? Actually, we could we could have the um, the service layer. I mean, the service layer could hold on to the song searcher. Uh, it sort of violates my service layer should not hold domain data. Mm. Um, and so it's a question of sort of right. There's this singleton song searcher. Who hold who holds on to it? I almost want to see your hexagonal diagram again to try and visualize this. Yeah, it's not a good fit. <laughs> well, in the sense that, um, let's see. Because um, the domain's uh, so thin. Because, here, I'll show this one. So mainly because uh, songs are in the domain And song searcher is also in the domain. It's just got a bunch of songs in it. Um, if we want it to be remain in memory, how do we do that? That would mean the application layer has a reference to it, um, which is not the typical way to do it. Mm. There's nothing, I mean, these are all guidelines. There's no rule that says we cannot do it. Uh, what are oh. the implica what are the implications? The only the only thing I'd be thinking about is like how hard is it to test? I don't actually think that's a problem. So we could totally do that. So let's just say that the hexagonal rule was sacrosanct. And how would we do it if we application layer couldn't if the applica if the application layer could not more than during the execution of a single request coming in right 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 because that's the typical right a request comes in the application layer coordinates load stuff from persistence which are basically domain objects and then calls method against those domain objects and so if song searcher is sort of the unit of of that process, it means when we go to persistence to say, give me all the songs, instantiate a song searcher, execute by theme, and then it goes out of scope and gets garbage collected. So we're loading 
you know, if we're loading 10 songs, not a big deal. If we're loading 100 songs, still not a big deal. If we're loading 10,000 songs, now we're talking about we're loading 10,000 songs and we only end up finding three. That's certainly a waste. So the domain can't hold on to it. Domain is transient. Right. So one thing that this diagram and most diagrams don't show is over time, the, the domain is, is, is transient, only comes into existence during, uh, and I think I have a sequence diagram that might make that more clear, but basically the domain only exists as long as this sort of round trip request are happening are happening once That's the domain why... returns its information and then the application returns to its caller all that stuff goes out of scope and is gone which makes it unit testable because it's not dealing with persistence right. or not right. persistence but it's it's not dealing with with hidden holding stuff. on to state yeah. yeah holding on to but there's no but it's just a guideline because generally you don't have so the danger of, of of the application layer holding on to over long you know in a sense over multiple requests um is that it will have be holding on to stale data right yeah so elevating the hash map to an in-memory repository means that we're saying that the database is responsible for searching that's the implication of of doing that. That so, song searcher hmm. becomes basically song searcher becomes the in-memory repository. Right. So if we if we say song searcher <clears throat> is the thing and we ensure its lack of its its freshness because the application layer dumps it every time there's a change. Um, that way we can ensure freshness, but that's still inefficient because we're basically, but if we're only making one song change a day, that's fine. One song change an hour, that's still fine. One song change every you know 10 minutes, that's still probably fine. Um, one song change, you know, and so, even sort of the most frequent times you've made, you'd make changes to songs, it's still probably relatively efficient um, until you get to a certain number of songs that have to be loaded. Because in a sense, it's it's basically the perfect cache because it's everything. So, oh, sorry, go. Yeah, that's basically what we're talking about, Suiji. So the, the, the song searcher is the entire domain in memory held onto, and it's invalidated when the write invalidates it, and we reload it. So if we had a domain that had some complexity to it, where would caching be? Um, would that be... Are you are you basically just asking where would caching be? Yeah. So if if we were not holding everything in memory when songs were individual things and the repository respo was responsible for retrieving them, um, the caching would be at the the query method. So every time we've called by theme with this parameter, and every time we call by theme with New Year's, it returned these results. That would be cached. Hmm. So if we're doing that frequently, then you know, because it's New Year's time, that would be the popular search. Uh, those would be cached, and we wouldn't hit the database. And you would but implement if, that, and that would be implemented in the application layer. No, that would be implemented uh, at the repository. You could implement it at the application layer with your own implementation. That's also possible. Um, Depend basically depends on who's doing the caching. Is the framework doing the caching, or mm -hmm. are you using an explicit cache of your own? Not that you're writing the cache, but that you're calling a library like Caffeine, which is a cache library. And I'd probably so if it were me, I'd probably use Caffeine so I could cache it at 
the in a sense the the more semantic layer of by theme as opposed to whatever the repository implementation does. So what we're talking about is is actually not apparently not not an uncommon scenario, right? If your data, if the, if your application, like I'm actually working with an individual coaching client, where it's the it's mostly a read search app the data changes but very infrequently and so why not load it all into memory uh then all your searches are in memory and everything is super fast um and it's only when when it becomes a tremendous amount of data where you're not where you're now starting to pay for that data right you've exceeded the, the virtual memory limits of of the container you know the level of you're paying for and now you have to pay more a month to store that in memory um, plus the time to to, to refresh it uh, if that has happening long enough then you probably would want to switch um, but it is probably even though it's not rare it's it's the less common because uh, a lot of most apps are, are what, what they refer to as sort of online transactional processing right you're editing this little bit here this little bit here this little bit here all in dis disparate things, um, but I think there's a there's a type of app that this falls under that has this very different read write behavior. Yeah, none of this requires us to actually have a DB yet. We're just faking stuff. Mm -hmm. To a certain extent, yes, but we are. But this is what I would consider an architectural decision. Um, not that it will be expensive to switch, uh, and we may have, I think, ha hit the limit on how much we should we should talk about and just decide. <laughs> um, but it is it is one of those uh, it it changes the basically the type of application it is. My head's spinning. I'm not sure how yeah, to decide this one. Yeah, I don't know if, <laughs> if all that has has actually helped us decide. Um, well, has it helped you? I'm kind of curious to see what it would look like if we kept going down this road where the song searcher is this fully loaded thing in memory that occasionally gets refreshed when a write happens. And put it where? And so the oh, uh, then it would be in the the service layer. the service use case service layer would have a reference to Song Searcher, and Song Searcher does all the work. And Song Searcher is basically the database, <clears throat> and we only have just the the persistence mechanism to store it when when uh, in a sense in case the the machine went down because if the machine never went down. Right. If we could say, you know, that, and there are machines that do this, we would never have to write to it anywhere. It would just be right. in memory. Um, so really, the persistence in this case, the database would be a backup mechanism. That's all it is, because operationally, it's not used. And we from a learning experience, if it turns out we've painted ourselves into a corner, well, we then deal with it. And that's, right. you know, yeah, it is a learning <laughs> exercise yeah so, so that's why we could flip a coin um and it, and i think you know we I, I think since i haven't done this that's why i'm curious what it would look like uh and since you don't care uh and <laughs> clearly and and as well that um it's not like we have tens of thousands of lines of code that would be harder to to migrate um i think we can go down this road and if it turns out to be wrong we've learned something so what yeah we learned something yeah Uh, so put versus post, that's an easy uh, question to answer. It's who decides what the ID is. That's it. Post assumes the server is going to create the ID or whatever thing you're creating. Put requires some kind of ID that the client creates. And that's it. Uh, for updating, you would use neither. Put nor post, you would use patch.
Yeah, I don't know. We'll we'll see because I think we're we're gonna start. We're gonna continue writing our test now. The one. The one. <laughs> it could just be load. Yeah, load the one. There can only be one. All right, let's switch back to you. Okay. Okay. No songs added in. I need some help. <laughs> um, well, so let's see. Um, I think we're going to need. Uh, we, we, we sort of haven't answered the question of what are the responsibilities of, of the ad song. Um, and since I'm not, I'm not sure how we want to do that. Um, I feel like I want to fall back to song service and have, and do the queries reads and writes through it. And then we can see later if we want to split it. Cause we're already, we, by saying add song, we've, we've, I, we're splitting it and I'm not sure what the other thing looks like. Got it. So rename this. Yeah. So this is just going to be song service test, uh, song. Sure. Song service test for now. You sure? Yeah. No, but I don't have any other ideas. <laughs> no, I'll just say yes. So um, we, we could Song use pants service. So, yeah. So so there is a <laughs> there is a naming convention that I'm not sure I I like. Um, uh, but Alistair Kobiner has somewhat adopted it for hexagonal, which is this is a port. And what is its purpose? It's for finding songs. And so you name the thing for finding songs, literally for finding songs. Um, I'm not, I, I'm not, I don't hate it, but I don't love it. So uh, we're going to fall back to this and we can always come up with a better name later. Yeah, we're going to write as much as we can in, in the test uh, and, and move stuff around and refactor. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the test name still applies. Uh, and so let's instantiate um, a song service. Alt enter. OK. Yep, and that'll be a class. Make sure it's in the right destination. Yep. Uh, this is one of what? those, neither one. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> I, what? I hate when IntelliJ does this. You have to click the three dots. Um, oh, because this is the case where actually the package does not exist. Uh, oh. So let's... So let's um, one on do go make a package? No, no. Uh, we'll manually change the destination directory. So go into that dialog and you can manually change it. This dialog? Um, oh, does it not allow you to actually go into the dialog? It's only a drop down? I can't. Oh. It's only a drop down, yeah. Um, all right. Create it there and then we'll move it. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because it we, it yeah. can't let it won't allow us to do what we want, right? Which is frustrating. Um, now let's do an F six move, and now we should be able to. Uh, oh, up here. So that's fine, but I think the. So not going to allow us to do that unless we actually create the package. Uh, uncheck the show only existing source routes. Yeah. That's ah. what I wonder if that was true before we did the move. I don't remember seeing that checkbox, but it could have been there. You want to try undoing and see? Yeah, let's undo because I'm curious. Yeah, me too. Undo one more. Yep. Okay. Alt enter. Huh? There we go. Yes. Oh, it was there. Okay, and I'm just blind to it because I never, I, I never check it. Cool. Sweet. Okay. Shortcut. Yeah, let's drop that down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. 
Var it up, I presume. Var it up, yep. All right. <clears throat> so that's our, our setup and our execution. And so now we'll do our query. Um, so now we have to decide what do we want to call it? So we want to say, um, find by theme or search by theme. We, I think we've been, we've been using the word search. I think so, we have. Yeah. Yeah. So let's say search by theme and then give it a theme. And let's create the method. Uh, actually, let's <clears throat> store it in a variable first. So that'll yeah, yeah, to force the type. Yep. yep. <laughs> Oop, hey. You won't be able to use dot var. You will oh, have to, right, you will right, have to right, manually right. do it because it doesn't. Oh my god, man! It it's it's only yeah. It only it only <laughs> knows what to var it up if if it knows what it's going to return. Otherwise, it can't. Actually, you want it to be a list of. We want it to be a list of song. Song or string at this point. Uh, well, we have a song object, and that's what we want to return. We want to return domain objects. Okay. <laughs> Writing stuff from what? scratch like an animal. <laughs> okay, Alt Enter. Now we can create it. With, with, uh, bears, with knives and bearskins, as they, they say. Um, yes, let's now create the method. No. No. <laughs> but good guess. All right. Uh, now we can write our assertion. Two hours in, we're finally writing tests. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Did you grab the um, the live template that uh, that Suiji shared in the Discord for the assertion? No, we should do okay. that. Okay. I uh, would do you do it live now or offline? Later. Uh, yeah, let's do it live now. Okay. Let's see. Discord. Which channel? Or which? Um... Uh, it'll be in the IntelliJ channel. IntelliJ. <clears throat> uh, here, I got it. You got it? Yep. Unless Suiji. I don't have it yet. It. Yeah, so drill into live templates. Uh, and we want, let's just start with the AST one. What are those three? Are those acronyms? ASE? Yeah, so they become the what you type. Uh, click on raw just because it's easier to copy and paste. And then copy the whole thing. And in IntelliJ, open up your settings. Go to live templates. Yep. And click in Java on the right. And then just paste. Or just right here. Doesn't matter. It just paste. Magic. Whoa. That's so that cool. is that is cool, but is totally not obvious. <laughs> yeah, it's it is, it is, obvious. It is, there's nothing that tells you that you can do that other than reading the documentation. I remember when I learned about it in a blog post. I'm like, you're kidding. That's how you do it? Because I was modifying that, the XML files directly that are that are where the configuration is, and that was no fun. Oh, wow. Uh, one more thing is um, I like to check the reformat according to style. Yeah, and then if you hit OK, the rest is all good. Uh, so now if you type AST, And then hit enter. So it does two things. That's nice. So thank you, Suiji. Uh, one is it automatically imports the assert that if it wasn't already imported, um, and then sets you up for writing a nice assert that statement. Awesome. Thanks, Suiji. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, yes, it it feels like, and 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 I have to remind people like, typing is not the bottleneck. That's that's not. 
the, the typing is not the important stuff. Yes, we have to do it, but it's not the important stuff. It's very easy to type a big pile of stuff that you now have to throw away. Yes, you can now you can now have AI generate lots of horrible code for you <laughs> inconsistently. Uh, so we assert that songs found. Um, by the way, when you see the blue rectangle, that means it's waiting for you to hit enter so it can guide you through a little bit of the right. workflow. Yeah. Let me go back. It's already it's already done, so it won't do that again. Oh, it won't do it again. Okay. Yeah. So if you don't see the blue rectangle, uh, it's it's no longer but guiding you through. Yeah, I was trying to get back to that stage. You'd have to you'd have to go back all the way to before you type the live template. Yeah. Right. So now you see this little blue rectangle. Yep. That tells you, and you might see there's a very faint one on the next line because that yeah. tells you where you're going to go next. Um, it's empty. Uh, and we want uh, exactly that. Yes. Yeah. It's a really smart template. I knew which one we wanted. Well, uh, in the template, you can say, "Give me a, a good candidate," and then it will. Oh, use really? Yes, and then it will use IntelliJ Smarts to figure out what you want. Hmm. Um, proper machine learning, not this fake stuff. <laughs> so this will fail because it's trying to dereference a null. Correct. So we switch to um yeah we can switch to the io free io free mm -hmm. there we go yep Voila. actual is right. no. so we are at Well, the simplest thing will work is just be returning an empty list. Mm -hmm. So if you just right. type em empty list, lowercase yeah. e. Yep, that one. Ah, there we go. I'm trying to remember which class it was in. I never remember which class it's in. I just know if I type EMP, it'll, it'll complete the right thing. Sweet. Okay, great. Ship it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, easiest, yeah. the easiest application to write is one that does nothing, or at least doesn't have to work correctly. <laughs> so if all we ever care about is that it doesn't find any results, we're done. Alas, I think you want more from it than that. Yes. Uh, we probably do, though. Perhaps want to do a commit. Yeah, probably a good time. Uh, X proof, the, do we replace the resource with the data uh, or partially update is going to be, it depends. Are they providing a complete replacement for whatever unit of, of data you're, you're working with, in which case it's a complete replacement? Um, or is it, I'm just updating my zip code because you got it wrong. Uh, there are positives and benefits to either that are sort of outside the scope and would require a lot of context. So it depends. But the benefit of something like a patch is you're basically saying, change zip code from 94115 to 94111 um, is the best way to go because if it turns out that it somebody had already changed it, it won't try to change it in an incorrect manner. So you want your patches to be item potent. Item potent is a key, key thing in the world of distributed systems, which basically any web app is. Item potency is the best. <laughs> It's okay. Perfect. Great. All right, we got the zero case. <laughs> let's go and and uh, <clears throat> let's go and, and implement the one case. Um, one song added. Then one song found. 
Um, Mirroring yeah, the... Yeah, one song added is found by its theme. Yeah, item potent has has that weight of 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 feeling very like a much a, a, an, a heavyweight academic term. Uh, yes, you can't retry safely if it's not item potent, um, because now you don't know. Are you causing two things to be created, for example, or, or uh, is it going to correctly not create it if it already exists? Yes, there's all sorts of contextual questions about mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> what is the scope of what you're updating? And this is where uh, I really find thinking about it um, in that way helps you define and design your, your aggregates. Because you may say, um, oh, they're just modifying the address. Maybe I can just modify that without, and then somebody else could be simultaneously updating your order because they're giving you a discount because you're on the phone with somebody. Because that never happens. We're you're both looking at the same thing. Or even worse, I, which I recently encountered. Um, so I have uh, dental insurance from a company called Delta Dental. There are two apps. There are two web apps, both of which are available to the public, both of which have billing and payments. And both of them are out of sync with each other. Oh, my God. So I can't make a payment because the current payment due is higher than what it thinks the current payment is due. So I want to pay the full amount that is actually due, but it's outdated by at least a month. And so I don't want to pay not the full amount because then it'll say you haven't paid the full amount. But the new system won't let me pay because it's broken. Because <laughs> it says, oh, we can't do that. Try again. Well, no, I'm trying, trying the same thing again is not going to work. And so this is that. Um, clearly, they went the let's rewrite our application route, and that hasn't worked out well for 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 them. Well, they may not care, but it hasn't worked out well for me. So they're not getting their money until they fix this. Um, unfortunately, they can say, "Well, you're not getting your insurance until you pay." So uh, I have I have to hope that um, they will be uh, magnanimous and say, "Oh, because it was our fault, we we won't." cancel your insurance it's terrible terrible I, like i can understand what they want to the in this yeah. same sentence i'm not sure yeah uh, 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 um um i have i have very low expectations i i expect i'm gonna have to call up and make a payment on the phone is what i expect and and cost them lots of money because they're gonna have to pay this person to take my payment instead of what's basically free but you know what not my problem it's their problem. As my son would say, that's a you problem, not a me problem. <laughs> oh. Yeah, let, let's let's not talk anymore about insurance companies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, back to the test. Um, so uh let's write our assertion. We will have to do something there, but let's write our assertion first, which yeah. is what do we what do we expect? And here we'll use a contains exactly because machine learning can only do so much. So what do we expect the song to be? Well, it's not gonna be a string, it's gonna be a song. Right. To get the constructor for the song, uh, you can hit. Is it Control P? Control P. Ah, that's a good one. I didn't know that one. Yeah, since I turn off, and I think we turned it off for you as well. The automatically always show the parameters because it's like if I want them, I'll ask for them, and how you ask for them is Control P. Got it. Or Command P if you're on Mac. That's me typing it in my notepad for yep. my cheat sheet. Yep. OK. So control P, it's theme, then title. OK, so 
I'm thinking we should have a different song title for New Year's just for a change. Yeah, let's mix it up. Of course, I can't think of one off the top of my head. I don't know if my spreadsheet has any. I'm not sure I've ever done a New Year's show or not. I have not. There's, ah. To do, uh, this will be our year by the zombies. Sure. This will be our year. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. Ah, interesting. The fact that he said by the zombies is going to make some future interesting. Because we've so long, so far, we've just been asserting on title. Right, right. Because it's, it's going to start. I'm sure there's other songs with that title that are not that song, right. not even a cover. Yeah. So that's good. We're going to have to start. Our assertions are going to start changing soon. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, so now I need to populate. Hi, Tukes. So now we can look at this test and say there's no possible way this could ever pass. Right. Um, but we certainly could watch it fail. Yeah. For the right reason, which is clearly an empty Going to be expecting this. Got that instead. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and so now we can... Um, Improve the setup. Yeah, so I think now we would have to improve. We'd have to add something to the setup. So this so, is creating an. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I'm not sure. Do we? Is this this is gonna, yeah, this is going to be different. It's going to be different. That's why I'm 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 not immediately giving you guidance because I'm not sure what we want to do here. <clears throat> um, we could simply call a method. Uh, because it wouldn't, I mean, we could make a creation method where it loads it, uh, and then we could figure out later when we get to actually, well, wait a second. Um, sorry, I got confused for a second. Uh, that, well, it's not add song by theme, it's just add song, right? Right. Um, so I uh, sorry, what, what was confusing me is I think the 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 white space, uh, because the songs found line 28 is actually part of our assertion. Oh um uh, part of the assertion. Like yes, that. because the the command, the thing we're actually testing is the adding of the song, not the finding of the song. Right. Right. Good point. Yeah. And that's where I got confused. It's like, wait, no, that's actually yeah. Okay. So now yes, we just add this that song. Yeah, oh yeah, that's initially what I was thinking because I thought we were testing the, the searching, but no, we're actually testing the adding. Um, so we actually want to call the method that actually adds it. <clears throat> and adding doesn't exist. Right. And right now it doesn't do anything. Right. So do we, let's see, we've got that, we've got a failing test. So we could implement. Well, we, well, I mean, we could run the test just to make sure it still fails for the same reason, but it obviously will because it's returning a constant. Right. Yeah. Um, and so our job will be now to <clears throat> um, potentially do a prepare refactoring. So what would make, what would make the change that we need to make easier? Turn that into a field? Um, no, because we're going to delegate to the song searcher. Oh, right. right. So we're, the refactoring that would make the next change easy is to introduce an instance of the song searcher in song service. As a field or as, as a, a... As, a, as a field Got that's it. defined and created in the constructor. Right, we don't have a constructor, do we? 
So you can do Automated alt in, way of doing this? We're, alt insert. We're, alt insert. But we're also in red. So we're experts at TDD, so we can move ahead with a, ref, a prepare refactor, even though we have one failing test. Got it. Okay. Um, and then in here, we'll create we'll instantiate song searcher. Can you do straight to field? Is there a? Uh, yes, basically new one up locally, and then ah. well, there's no one. There's no one step. I don't think. Gotcha. But we can new it up. Hmm. Why is it not working? Uh, it's complaining about song searchers. So what's it complaining about? Let me do it again and see what it's. Uh, song searcher may not have a constructor that's accessible to us. Ah. Shall we go take a look at it? Yeah. Yep, it's private. private. <clears throat> because we have the create method. So let's use the create method. Ah, uh, this guy. And now you can assign that. Um, I think you could actually expect it's, that to a field. It's taking song song. Well, it's taking variable arguments, and none is oh, is a valid, valid variable argument. <clears throat> Got it. And then you said this can go straight to a field. Yeah. So if you do um, uh, uh, Alt Control F. Whoa. Or or Control Alt F. Uh, and that's exactly it. Yep. So now, so, if... yeah. So that was that was a refactor that shouldn't have changed anything because it so, introduced a field. Um, sorry, finish what you were saying. Yeah. So we could run our test and see that that test still fails for the same reason. But an interesting additional step that we could take. It is still failing for the same reason. Mm -hmm. Whoops, wrong one. Why is my brain? Um, couldn't we, instead of returning empty mm -hmm. list, mm -hmm. return song searcher? Yes. Yeah. That was the that was the next. That's what you were thinking. <clears throat> thing I was going to suggest. Yes. What does it not like? Oh, they probably return to different types. Song Toucher returns a list. Oh, of our strings. search by theme is returning strings. String. Ah, interesting. Okay. Let's go look at that. We we're hmm. probably doing the simplest thing that could work at the time. Because uh, that's all we cared about. So we have a decision to make. We either fix this or or change the um, well. We could do a parallel change. That might be the uh, a a good way to go. So we could deprecate this one, make a parallel change that basically just does line twenty seven. Basically, does that method but doesn't do the mapping. Right. What were we doing at the mapping? We were. Except we need to do the. Well, we wouldn't map. We would still need to check for null, but we wouldn't need to do the mapping. We would just return the list. Okay. <laughs> Uh, song searcher is in the domain because it's here. It's basically been domain oriented stuff, but it maybe got blown apart. Um, what do you? I'm thinking parallel change, but yeah. I so I think it. I think um, because we cannot have two methods that return lists 
that are generified in different ways, uh, uh, different we would have to rename one of them. So I suggest we rename this one to uh, song titles by theme. And then the other one will just be by theme. Got it. We need to make this compile. So yes. So for now, revert, you can revert that line maybe. Right. Yep. Now we can do. Now we're now we're getting into the red zone of of. Uh, we have a failing test and we're about to do a, a refactoring, but since, yeah. it's a re it's, since it's a rename, um, I'm pretty confident. And what was the suggested name you gave? I missed it. I was uh, song titles by theme. Uh. Well, we could see that all the other tests are still passing and just that one. Yes. Is the only one failing, which is helpful. Uh, so we could do that, or we could do an extract method uh, to end hmm. up with the method that we want, <clears throat> which is what I was thinking. Okay. So let's um, let's extract basically the entire method. And this one we'll call it by theme. Uh, wait, is that the order we want to do it in, or do we want to do in line so extract that we get a method that returns a song no i think we do want to wonder if i'm trying to do too much uh <clears throat> Yeah, I there's probably there might be a way to do uh, to do it more efficiently, but we'll just yeah, we'll just grab line 27 and extract that because that's the actual thing that um can I do oh, I, know, I know I know what we can do. Okay. Okay. Uh let's switch around uh the if block. Oh so so uh, click on the if statement and do um on the if itself. My cursor control got lost. And now do Alt Enter. And let's invert the if condition. Now we have exactly what we want. So let's grab 27 through 31, extract that to the to the method. What are the multiple what? exit points? I only see one. Oh, it's because it doesn't have an else. Maybe. Oh, uh, well, we can fix that pretty easily on 30. We can just assign matching songs the empty list. That's probably better anyway. So replace the return on 30 with matching songs equals. Oh. Because what will happen is when it does the stream map on an empty list, it'll basically just do nothing and return an empty list. Should we run the test, make sure everything's still? Sure. Yeah, that's the one that was. And this is where it's like, after a certain amount of time, having that one failing test is is starting to get a little bit more concerning. But I, th yep. but I think we're almost there. So we'll, we'll go one more. Um, so now let's ex extract that part. Uh, that's this part, right? Yep. And that's just by, by theme. theme. Yeah. Yep. Um, we can now make that public too. Now we and, go back to the test. And now, now, yeah, and we can refactor that later, but now we can go back to our test. Which we were. 
So it will still fail um, because we're not forwarding the uh, we're not forwarding the search by theme on the song service. So let's go back to song service. And yeah, I know we have refactoring to do on the on the searcher, but we'll we'll come back to that later. Oh right, we're gonna do this. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you don't want the class; you want the field. Nope. No, that one. Yeah. Yep. That was that was the whole thing. We wanted one that returned a list of songs. Right. Yeah. It just took me a second to figure out which was which. Yes. Yeah. And yep. why is it red? Okay, there we go. All right. Now so, add song still not going to work, but now this is the last so, it's the last of the prepare refactoring. Exactly. Yes. Now it should fail again, but nothing for the same really reason. Failed. Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. So now we implement this. <laughs> what? I, 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 I laugh because that's not going to be straightforward. Um, oh. Well, we can we can cheat. So let's cheat. Oh, and uh, just add a song even though it's. Well, so uh, actually, it's not cheating. This is act, this is kind of the way we were the direction we're going. We're going to create a new song searcher. Oh, instantiate a new one? Mm -hmm. And give it the song we just got. Interesting. Actually, wait a second. We've already got a field, right? So yeah, you have to assign it to the field because we're replacing. So I might as well got it. We're yeah. throwing away the old song searcher. And we are creating a new one. But now we want to use the same. We want to use the same, the same creation thing, yeah. Yes, we are invalidating the cache. Yes. <laughs> uh, the project is not yet public on GitHub. Um, at some point, Mike might decide to do that, but not yeah. yet. Yeah, probably soon. Maybe even really soon. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for asking us, Poop. Um, so it's complaining because the field was initially created as final. Oh, so it's final, right? Undo right, that. Right. All right. Now we're adding the song. I, Do we predict or your I predict yeah. this will pass now. I think it will too. Now is it gonna break other tests? No, because they're not it's using it. Nothing else is relying on it. Right. There we go. Nobody else is using it through this interface. So now the 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 one was the easy one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the 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 many is 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 gonna be the harder one. Uh, and and what's really interesting about this is is uh, those those of you out there who are much more uh, functional programming experts might say, well, totally, of course you'd do it this way. You want to add a song to Song Searcher, you take the Song Searcher, and it returns a new one, and everything's immutable, and it's just a function call. It's a function that modifies the Song Searcher and gives you a new one. So in a sense, that's what we could do. Um, there are other ways we could do it. Yes, indeed, we are we are we are creating the perfect cache, which is always has everything and is always up to date. Eagerly hydrating the cache. I like yes. that phrase. Um, well, I think it's I think it's usually called warming the cache. So we are we are we are heating we are boiling the cache because it has everything in it. So, so many interesting metaphors for for this hydrating and and warming and and so on. Um, but we have passing tests, so I suggest we do a commit and then decide how much longer we want our stream to go. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Second cut. <laughs> um, I think we now the the service supports adding a single song.
Is that what you said? Yep. All right. Um, how are we doing? So I could go longer. And so up to you yeah, how I much longer go. you want to go. Yeah, I could go for a bit. I wouldn't mind a quick break just to kind of stretch my okay. bones. Let's take a quick stretch break. And okay. then uh, and then we'll we'll do the harder part, which is adding adding multiple songs. Yeah. All right. Stay tuned, folks. <clears throat> we'll be back shortly. All right, so let's, uh, oops, not that one, that one, there we go. So. One more test. Uh, do we want to do any refactoring on oh, the song right. searcher so we don't forget? Yeah. Good point. So I think there was a few things we could fix up. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
I think one we can one thing we could do is is uh, make the make that method a lot more concise. So there's uh, instead of the get method, there's a get or default. And so the default will be the empty list. Ah. Uh -huh. Wait a second. So getter default now takes two things. Right. Um, the, the, the default second. is a second value. Yep. And we can basically just delete the rest of it and just return it directly, or delete the if statement and then inline the return. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Which IntelliJ is helpfully suggesting. Yeah, so that's much nicer. Sweet. Uh, let's run our tests just to be sure that <clears throat> that works like we expect it to work. And then yep. we could inline this one. Yeah, I don't have a strong a strong feeling about that one. But I'm fine to try it if you want to do it. So go try it and see if you like yeah, it. Yeah, let's try it, see if you like it or not. Turn by theme. I mean, it's honestly, it's going to go away at some point. So I don't, I don't have yeah. a strong feeling. I'm going to leave it. Okay. That way. Um, oh. Anything else? I think that was the only things that we needed. Yeah, I think the rest is fine. Let's commit. So one thing I I tend to do is when I do a refactor like that, I don't bother saying much because, ah. <clears throat> because if I want to see what was refactored, I just look at the diffs anyway. That's true. So just say refactored? I just, yeah, refactor. Cool. I'm not I'm not fully uh Arlo Belshi uh commit notation bought in to it to it. Um in that case you would just do R. <laughs> mm. Uh, well, I mean, I guess it's it kind of gets into how often do you look at the comments yes. as a commit? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, honestly, I rarely do. Yeah, me too. <laughs> or how often do you look at it where you don't say, I still need to go look at the diffs anyway? <laughs> right. I would look at the diff. Yeah. Okay. So narrowly in the trees. Howdy. James, you just missed us saying that we're not going to do that because this method's going to go away. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we could. We tried it, we didn't like it, and it, that method's going to is has a very short lifespan. So, all right, um, we did zero, we did one. Now is time for many. Where did you run? Oh, there we go. Um, I want to say multiple songs. Yeah. Good with you. Uh, I might say there instead of it's, but otherwise. Yeah, the that's it just, was, was annoying to me. That's just nitpicking. That's the right there. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Well, that's the there there. Yes, that's the that's the correct there. <laughs> Put the there there. Yes. <laughs> Put there there there. Okay. Um let's do it. Do we need yeah. another New Year's song? <laughs> well, we do have we didn't really in this version of the service, we didn't add old Lang Syne, did we? Uh that's true, we didn't, so we could use it. <clears throat> um, or we could add Funky New Year by the Eagles. Funky New Year. There you go. Yeah. Um, so now here, we're expecting that we don't need to add multiple songs at this. No, we do. We do because we want to make sure we find both of them. Right. So. Ah, so I wasn't expecting you to do that. 
Oh, interesting. Okay. So what were you thinking? Because I was thinking that you would call ad song multiple times. Ah. Because we're we were sort of under the banner of adding one song at a time. Got it. All right, James. See you later. <laughs> Lost out to Ensembler. Yes. <laughs> That's why we like you, Suiji. Actually, what is the parameter for add song? Is it just song? <clears throat> yeah. Oh, I thought it was songs with the the Varag. Uh, no, the Varag is, is in the song searcher. Song at searcher. this level, it's one at a time. Got it. What was it called? Funky New Year? Funky New Year. I never think of the Eagles as funky. N no. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm not even familiar with the album that it's on. Apparently they put out a, a Please Come Home for Christmas album, which I was not aware of. But I'm sure there's a lot of music I'm not aware of. Yeah. Okay, so we've got All right. Yeah, so now it's the same. Yep. Now here we want it to do, we could still do, oh yeah, it's a Verargs and contains exactly, so we could do the same. Right. Actually, I could have stolen this. And here, put the comma. Right. And this will totally fail. So before you run it, yep. how exactly is it going to fail? It's going to only have the song Funky New Year in it. I believe that's correct. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not 100% certain of that, but I. I'm pretty sure that that it will only hold on to the one you added last. What you added last. That's <laughs> what yeah. So the actual is only Funky New Year. Yeah. I always um, I hate the wording of this, expecting actual. Yeah, I. It. it this it, is the expecting. It, yeah, I I I agree that. Um, the assertion output messages, especially for the contained stuff, is not quite the way I'd want it. Um, I understand what they're trying to say. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. Expecting an actual. It was expecting, here's the actual, to contain exactly and in same order. So that answers your question, uh, Oye, is contains exactly is these things in this order as specified. Um, if you don't care about the order, then you don't use contains exactly. You use contains exactly in any order. And if you want the cheat sheet, I've got a cheat sheet for you that tells you the difference between all the different contains. Uh, I see a post to chat coming. Yes. So go ahead and, <laughs> and uh, uh, let's, we can close that. Um, I'll find my, there it is. So you can find the cheat sheet here. All right. What's the what's the simplest thing we could possibly do to make this work? Hmm. If we are, so I think this re this requires a. Uh, so one of the nice things is create song searcher, is varargs. Right. Um, and so again, sort of this is a very functional way of thinking. Uh, create a new song searcher with what's currently in the song searcher plus this new song. So would that 
So we'd have to have a way, I don't know if we currently have a way to find out what are all the songs in Song Searcher. Do we have a way to do that? Mm. We do not, so we would need that. So it would basically do is say create song searcher. Oh song searcher dot all songs, comma song. Right. Although the syntax is going to be a little tricky because it's far args. But basically that's that's the gist. So we'll start with Yeah, I would I would say the immutable the more immutable style of OOP tends to look functional in 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 the places where you're dealing with the immutable stuff. <clears throat> yes, and that's that's the question of where where you know do we encapsulate the knowledge of that? So we could ask the song searcher itself to do that instead of exposing all the songs. Yeah, that seems better to me. Uh yes, yes. Yeah, I I, I happen to agree. So we'd make a new um, a new method on create song searcher. Mm -hmm. That takes. So it would be, be. Oh, sorry. It would. It would still return a song searcher, but it would be create song searcher adding or song or add. Yeah, because it's it's not quite a create. Um, and again, it depends on on how we want to on how we want to. Uh, because it could just be add song. That returns that new song searcher. Yeah. That seems which, like which which violates because it's it's functional and functional differs from object oriented. Uh, it does violate the command query separation concern. Um, but for now, I'm fine with that. Uh, because it 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 looks like it violates it, but technically it doesn't because it's a creation. And creation is is it's interesting because Birch and Meyer doesn't really talk about creation as much, but one of the things I've I've learned is there's commands, there's queries, but then there's creation, and creation is this third category that, by definition, must return the thing it's creating. Right. So it's so a factory is neither a command or right because really this is a factory. Exactly. So, and a factory is not a command or a query. Right. I mean, right. it's sort of a command, and it looks it looks command like object. it looks yeah. command like, but commands modify state of an existing object, and factory methods and constructors do not. They create something new out of out of whole cloth, as it were. Yeah, I mean, extend search. It's really, but it's really. It's really an add, uh, and that's where we might want to use the word create. Uh, and, and so I don't know, and I don't know how much we want to worry about that naming because we're probably not going to stick with it that long. So I'm, um, I'm not feeling the need to, to put a lot of effort into the name if it's not going to stick around. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so we could we could just say add song and it returns a new song searcher. Or just add. Don't even have to say song. Uh, but it wouldn't be a static be method. It. So be careful. Oh, it would not be. No. Because it has to have access to the current oh. list of songs. Right. Right, right, right. Of course. So that means we're going to have to do something like this. No, 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 no. No, we're 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 saying to oh. the existing song searcher, give me a new song searcher with all the stuff you've got plus this one more. Got it. So, so it's just new like method it's just like or... you were concatenating. No, no, song searcher equals song searcher, but the 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 field, not the class. Right. No, no, replace the existing line. 
change the change the s on the right side of the declaration make that lowercase change the method name to add oh because we're holding i didn't yeah we already, yes we already have it right it's and it's, it's, already... it's, it's in a sense it's a type of concatenation right you would right. say string equals a string plus string here we're saying song searcher equals song searcher concatenate song yeah i was my my brain was thinking song check was the local variable but right yeah it's okay weird. yeah weird brain yeah um oops not that this not that nope. either third times charm yep yep now varargs or just the one i would say just the one okay um what i would say is return this and it will and it should fail in the same way let's find out or in a different way actually i'm not sure Ooh, somebody else broke right because we returned That's interesting. I wouldn't have expected it to be empty. Uh, oh, of course, the, this one would be empty because we created it empty. And so that's the only thing that ever existed. Right, so we've now broken both, which is fine. Because <laughs> that should that should have been expected because we were when we were instantiating it, we were instantiating it uh, with, with nothing. And the ad does nothing. And so therefore we get nothing. Because of where'd it go? Oh, I'm in the tet, and no, I'm looking at the wrong one. What are you looking for? I was trying to see where, where that. Where that creation is that's an empty is it in the searcher yes <clears throat> they were putting no songs so well, that's private we're calling it through this right but we're we're doing the creation with nothing with nothing okay so and and so what we could do is instead of returning this we could get the first test to pass by saying return create with that song and now the first test will pass but the second test should fail in the same way it did before because it's still in the same way or it will yeah, and it, it only remembers the last one because we're not handing it the ones it already knows about. Right. And so now we can pull the songs out of, so the song searcher knows the songs it already has, so we can pull those out. Sorry, I was distracted by shortcuts. What was it again? Um, so, before, so basically line 37 and a half, we can pull out all of the values. Oh. Um, this will be a bit trickier because we'll have to flatten it. Uh, but that's okay, we can do a flat map. So let's, um, on, the, on the map, let's do, So the theme to songs map. <clears throat> and we want um, basically values. And so that returns a collection of a list. So we want to do a flat map. Uh, and Let's see what is how does flat map work here. 
Um, what does flat map take? What are the parameters? So it maps a list of song to a stream of songs. Oh, OK. So we can just say, um, uh, we can just do S and then an, an arrow. Yeah, or songs in an arrow, whatever. Um, and then we can do S dot stream. I think that's what we want. Uh, and then we need to uh, collect it to a list. You can just say to list. Oh. Although we're probably going to do it to an array. So let's do it to an array. Uh, but not that one. <laughs> we want the one that takes uh, a parameter because we want the right type. This one? Yeah. And uh, we need to say the type we want is song as a song array. So say new song. And then uh, I think open square bracket zero, close square bracket. Or is it just new song without the zero? I always forget. Uh, drop the zero, just do open close square square bracket. And then I think there's a better way. I, I haven't done this in a while. Um, I think we didn't just want open close curly braces. No, no, Appreciate square brackets. No, oh, and then the, do. Yeah. Uh, mm. That's not quite right. How does that work? Uh, let's do it without that and let, let IntelliJ help us. So just remove the parameter totally. We'll cast it to, to a song array and let, uh, so just create, delete the whole parameter. Um, assign it, so we'll assign this. Yeah. Uh, and these are songs. And then change the object to song. And that will require a cast. So let IntelliJ help us with that. Uh, and then let's help Intel, let's have IntelliJ uh, help us further. Uh, no, that's not going to help us. Yeah. No, that's not going to help us either. Hmm. Um, well, let's not worry about it too much. Uh, we can also take the this s dot stream, and that can be shortened to the method handle. You mean? So you can either have IntelliJ do it, or you can type it. I was trying to have IntelliJ do it, but. Oh, then uh, unselect it because otherwise it's not going to help you. So you want to be on the orange part. Oh, it, that's why it's orange. Yeah. So you can just do Alt Enter. You don't. I was going to ask you: is, is the short Alt Enter is the light bulb? Ah, got it. Alt Enter is always the light bulb. Yes. Oh, that's what it's doing. Got it. Uh, while we have a stream, we could concat the new song onto it. Yeah, we could. Um, not sure how how would we do that. Uh, well, I thought we were saying we had to re-instantiate the song searcher. We do, but it's easy. But it's so either we can do a uh, song comma song array. I think that works for var args. I use var args so infrequently, uh, I forget the syntax. Um, or we could, uh, or we could add it to the to the stream. Let's just let's just do it this way, and we can we can always. Refactor or refactor later. Okay. So uh, when we call create song searcher, we want to pass in. Um, I think we can do song comma songs. 
Let's see if that works. If not, is it going to change the order? The order. Well, order doesn't matter. It doesn't. The yeah, assert no. does. Then we shouldn't care. Ah. Got it. I mean, does order matter? I don't think. So. I don't think actually order should matter. No. Why is it complaining? Uh, because we probably can't do varags that way. Um, hmm. So uh, what we can do is uh, we can concatenate that and just return songs. So let's change 42 to just be songs. Um, yeah, and, that, and when, then we can just do the stream doc and cat. So before we do the, the two array. Uh, oh, in here. Yeah, so save save everything from there. So basically um, save everything after the from, from after the flat map. So where, where the cursor is up to, no, no, don't do dot. So select, sorry, let me give you more precise instructions. Uh, select from where you are to theme songs theme to songs map. So go select up. No, 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 not with that. Sorry, select up. Select from theme songs map through flat map. Yes. Okay. Extract that to a variable. And that's song stream. Uh, and so what we want to do is um, stream dot concat. So put it in front of, sorry, put it in front of right where the cursor was. So in front of song stream, stream dot concat, oh. uppercase S. Oh. So we're calling a method that's going to concatenate two streams. Uh, what was it? It was uh, ARG. Uh, sure, you could do that. And uh, as the second parameter after song stream, it'll be stream of song. And okay. then that'll get converted to an array. All right. Uh, and then just delete that dot, that, that stray dot you've got after two array. There's probably a better way to do this, um, but again, this code is not going to live for very long, so I'm not terribly concerned. You can just do a reformat if you want. I tried; it didn't really like it, but I'll try again. Is it Command Alt L? Yeah. Yeah. So that lined up the concat with it up to array. Mm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Phew. It's it it. This is this is the problem with var args. Is var args is an array. And once you start having arrays and collection classes mixed together, you get this kind of ugliness. Um, and this is why I tend towards like var args serve their usefulness, and then I I tend to to migrate away from them because they start being annoying in exactly this way. <laughs> All right, let's run our tests, and we think Prediction? it will pass other than the order. Right. The order might might throw things off. Uh, oh, who can't be cast? It's saying, what's it saying? I can't, uh, can you have the yeah. line wrap? Oh yeah. It's on the right, all the way on the right. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, it may not be able to do it because it couldn't create that that object. Um, that's fine. Uh, so we'll just do uh, the, the right way. Uh, who wasn't able to create the right object? Um, so when it creates an array, this you can't cast arrays. 
Um, so we need to just do a uh, two array with a specific type. Oh. Um, and so the way we'll do that is uh, put in there song open close square bracket and then colon colon new. And then we can remove the cast from the front of 42. That's why it's grayed out. Yeah. Run the test. Yep. Voila. Wow. Um, I'm a little disappointed that IntelliJ didn't suggest using, because uh, I knew we had to create a new song array that was basically empty. Um, I just don't use arrays a lot, so I forgot the syntax. Um, and the method handle is is uh, actually the easiest way to do that. Yeah, but I'm a little disappointed that IntelliJ didn't suggest that. But hey, here we go. Ship it. <laughs> We've got some refactoring that we'll probably want to do, but we have, we'd have to decide how much uh, is, is worth it and how much we're going to throw away. Because this immutable song searcher where we add songs by doing it this way, I don't know. I, I don't necessarily see that as our long-term solution. Right. Commit text, um, what are you thinking? Uh, we can now add multiple songs. Yeah, and overloaded might, might be useful, um, but we got it working, so we'll... Yeah, I'm definitely feeling the uh, late afternoon. Yes energy level i thought i thought we'd get it done in 20 minutes but it took 40 minutes so because <laughs> stuff takes longer than you think yeah it's all good yeah i i wish var args were much more compatible with collections and streams or streams one of the two that would be that would be nice but that's that's backwards compatibility for you all right um cool. that's all for today right so right. uh we're doing our crack of dawn tomorrow yes so tomorrow um uh 9 a.m pacific which is what did i say 9 plus 8 17 5 5 p.m utc is that right um uh and we'll have a strict two hour limit which will actually probably be a good idea <laughs> yeah, that one's a strict one because I have to go uh, yeah. see my son perform. Yes. So 4 a.m. for you. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Profess. Wow. Uh, well, I mean, eventually we, we're going to want to stuff, store stuff in a database. The question is how and what. That, I think, is we'll have to figure out, yeah. um, but not today. All right, folks. Cool. Thanks a lot for hanging with us on a, on a holiday weekend. Um, and as always, you know where to find find us on the Discord. Uh, so join us there. Otherwise, we will see you tomorrow for episode seven. Have a great rest of whatever day is left for you, or uh, have a good sleep if it's the end of day. <laughs> Take care. Bye.